Did the button work? Oh, who knows? We're waiting. Uh, waiting to see if my thing actually decides to reset here. Oh, there we go. Okay, hi. That's better. <laughs> uh, okay, hi. How you doing? How is everybody? It's been, it's been a while. It's actually probably been a hot minute. It has been a hot minute. I haven't been streaming in a while. <laughs> but I have been busy. I have been very busy. Uh like th like this patch for example was a lot. This this patch was a lot a lot a lot. There there was a lot. And then and then I would have had more time. I was going to stream a while back. Um but uh that was when I had that realization where I accidentally recorded all of my quest footage at a ridiculously low resolution on accident. And I had to do it all again. So I had to play through 4.1 twice. That was fun. Um, I'm still not caught up though. As you can see, it's been a while since I uploaded my last theory. Um, yeah, it's been a while. But that doesn't mean I haven't been doing anything. I just finished writing the um, 4.2 recap. And since 4.2 was a lot, the recap was also a lot. It's 46 minutes. So um, look forward to that, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I also got to do the recap for the Nartsits and Kreutz world quest line. Because that's over now. Um, so that's got to happen. I also did get into the uh, closed beta for Zenless Zone Zero, so I got to play that for a while. Um, not a whole lot. I'm probably way farther behind than most content creators, but I thought I'd post a, a short review on that, so that got written this morning. <laughs> um, apart from that, I have two theories that I'm going to try and do this patch. Uh, I'll probably just get to one realistically, uh, so we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Anyway, um, I also haven't done my commissions or anything, so I'm just kind of going to be bumming around doing stuff like that. Um, feel free to ask me whatever you want to do. Uh, what was the other thing I wanted to mention before I keep going? Oh, right. Um, I don't know how many of you like regularly check the community page, like the community tab for YouTube. Um, but I happened to get my hands on five tickets to the Genshin concert in Chicago. And I am actively giving them away right now. And the only thing you have to do is go to my website, which is ashikai.com, and then fill out a form with your Discord username, a display name, and then you have to fill out like a, a CAPTCHA, basically. Other than that, that's it. That's all you got to do. If you can get to the Genshin concert and you want to go, to the one in Chicago on January 7th. Um, and you might want to enter because that show is sold out. There's no other way to go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Canadian problems. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I think I had an option to also do New York. But I figured the New York one would be a little bit harder to do. We went to Chicago. But yeah. So there is that. Um, depending on my schedule, I may or may not also be there. We'll see. My schedule's been a little bonkers lately. Anyway, I'm just gonna pick, like, random things in chat. I also got rid of stream elements. Um, I was using it for a while. I got rid of it because it really annoyed me, and I thought it actually made streaming worse. <laughs> so, um, that means I'm gonna kind of be going back to that whole thing where I'm a little bit behind where chat is at. Uh, so don't, don't mind me, okay? Don't mind me. Also, I got Farina. I got her off stream. I'm sorry. I, I was, I was busy and I wanted, to, yeah. I, if I waited until I had a time to stream, I would have gone past her banner. <laughs> sorry. I said I would and then I didn't. And that's how it goes. Uh, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? I'm actually paying attention to chat now. I did all my announcement things and housekeeping whatevers. Uh, 
Group 234 says, I've seen a lot of people saying that even though Nouvellette now has the Hydro Authority, the Gnosis is still active and valuable for the Fatui, but Piero said that they want the God's Authorities. I'm not really sure what the question is. Both of those statements are true. <laughs> the, the basis of an Archon's Authority is made up of multiple parts. One of them is the Gnosis, and the other one is the Dragon Authority. So having a Gnosis still gives them power. It just depends on what kind of power they want. Do you drink water or this delectable soda? Obviously you drink water. You gotta stay hydrated. We're in the nation of water. You're drinking Fanta? Fanta? You're drinking some sugary something? Oh, hey, look! There's a chest. Actually, there's a couple of chests. Uh, after I do my commissions, I'm gonna let you guys pick what team I run around Fontaine with. Um, but let me let me just do my commissions first because um, it's my friendship farming team, and Scar is there to carry them because two of them can't do any damage. <laughs> I still need to do this thing with the blubber beast. I haven't done it yet on this account because because I got distracted when I had to do everything twice. Do I play Honkai Impact third? Um, I used to like a little bit, and then I just couldn't keep up with it. So I ended up dropping it, but I watch other people play through. So like I, I keep up with the lore for it, but I don't play the game because I found the uh, um, I found the combat to be not quite as satisfying as I wanted to be, which is actually kind of ironic because I actually like uh, Zenless Zone Zero, but and those have very similar combat systems, but um. Zenless feels a bit more refined now, so maybe that's why I like it a little bit more. Also, I think the story for Zenless is easier to follow <laughs> uh, compared to Honkai Impact. And and uh, Honkai also has this problem where the beginning is really bad. Like, even, even a really hardcore Honkai fan will tell you this. The beginning of the game is really bad, which makes it really hard to get through. So, um, anyway, at, at the time when I started playing it, I couldn't actually like manage to keep up with it and do everything else that I had to do. So I kind of dropped it and then I just kind of watch other people play it. But yeah. Zone girl, do you believe we'll ever get further information on Albedo's brother? Brian daughter's previous attempt at a hom homunculus, the Whopper flower Albedo is dead, but it isn't Rubido still out there. Uh, that, Oh, I don't want to fight this thing right now. Go away. We're, we're, I need to find my other commission. Um, that's debatable. I feel like everyone kind of has their own opinion about what happened at the end of that event. Like, some people say Albedo killed him. Some people say Rubido killed Albedo. And then, uh, Albedo's been replaced. So we have, like, a fake Beto, and that's why he looks like a bug. Um, others say that he is still out there. So, like, I, I would say he's probably dead. He's either dead or the theories about him being um, turned into Joel's dad are true. One of the two. I am really distracted right now. Charlotte is kind of hilarious to go on the overworld with because you just kind of like take pictures of people dying. As Farina abuses them <laughs> with her little minions. <laughs> It's really fun. I don't know why it amuses me as much as it does. It really shouldn't. It really, really, really shouldn't. Kong, I am so sorry. I still don't know how to say your name properly. I feel like you tell me every time and I never remember and I'm so sorry. But thank you for the super chat. Uh, it says, uh, Nouvellet did what Fossilors couldn't, save the Fontanians. Fully fledged elemental dragons with their authority stronger than the dra stronger than the archons confirmed. I think so. Yeah, I think that's probably the case. Um, considering that, like the dude who heads or the person, I guess. I guess we don't know if it's a dude or or a lady. Um, 
the person who heads up Celestia, who kind of like defeated the dragons in the first place, made them submit and stole things from them, but didn't actually kill all of them. And I wonder if they just kind of couldn't. Mostly because they seem to be forces of nature rather than, you know, like, like a person so much. Like, even in the case of Egeria, um, when they killed Nouvellet, they had to make Egeria to function in his place, right? Like, they can't, they couldn't just get rid of him. And even after she died, she, he was finally able to be reborn. So, like, it almost feels like because they're such an integral part of the world, they just can't be destroyed so much. Does that make sense? That's kind of how I've interpreted it. But they're, I think they're quite, quite a lot stronger than Archons in their complete form, to be clear. Because, like, Archons right now have the authorities of the dragons, with the exception of Arena, because, obviously, Fosalorus gave hers back. But, like, you know, A should theoretically... Is he just, like, walking into the water? What is, what is this Hillitrill doing? Yeah, he's, he's trying to go swimming, and he can't. Look at him. Look at this poor guy. All right, well, that's... <laughs> okay. He's trying to swim. He's having fun. Um, but, like, A, A probably is significant str significantly stronger than whoever the Electro Sovereign is, you know? Because they also not only have their own powers, but they have the authorities of the Electro Sovereign right now. So, like, that's that's kind of how I've taken it. Oh, I got... I did all my commissions. What am I doing? I'm running around in circles. I am running around in circles. Uh, one certain ordinary magician. Thank you so much for your super chat. Do you think different cultures may have a different take on lore? Because as far as I know, the Chinese community love lore digging around the Sienjo, whereas you said you are not interested. Thank you for Uh, this is... This may be more of a me problem than a cultural problem. Um... And a lot of it boils down to preferences in terms of, like, how you like to do stories and how you like to experience them. So, my problem with Star Rail isn't actually the Sienjo. Nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the fact that I don't feel like they really give us time to bond with the worlds correctly. Not correctly. That's a bad word. Uh, sufficiently. Like, enough. It doesn't feel like we're bonding with them enough, at least to me. And I think part of that comes from the fact that there are just so many of them. Like, we barely got to know her to Space Station, and now we're off to Bellabog. And then we barely got into Bellabog, and now we're off to the Sienjo. And I kind of get that that's sort of the point of the game. But they just, they feel no more important than just, like, the singular city that you visit. Like, I don't really care about the world at large. Like, it doesn't really... It feels too much of a, a a shock every time you go because none of them are connected to each other. So, like, what's the point of me learning about all of Bellabog's, you know, interconnected lore if it doesn't matter, essentially, right? Because, like, it, that's not going to help me when I get to the Sienjo. And her to Space Station won't help me either. So, like, there's there's little things like that where I'm like, I just, I have a really hard time with it. Um, and that's been, that's been my primary problem with Star Rail. And, and that's honestly a personal preference. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It's just something I don't like. Um, by comparison, Genjin, and actually I can now say Zenless Zone Zero, have the approach to world building that I prefer. Whereas you get to go to a lot of different places and see a lot of different things, but they are all still a bit more interconnected and not just in like a really super high level way. Like the mechanics of one world apply to the next world. Um, people can kind of cross contaminate the storylines in a way. That's a bad term too. Um, like you can have people from Sumeru show up in Fontaine. You can have uh, people from Mondstadt marry people from... Uh, you know, Natlin, if you really wanted to. There's a lot more interconnectedness, so it makes me feel a lot more like if I learn the lore of one region, it matters when I go to the next one because it'll help me contextualize things. For example, um, 
if I didn't know anything about the stuff in the desert for Sumeru, I wouldn't have a context for when certain events happened in Fontaine. Like, Remus didn't establish Remuria until after Gurabad both rose and fell, which would make his ancient civilization one of the most recent ones, right? So, like, those, those are the things that I'm talking about, and that's why I don't particularly like it. I'm also feeling like it's really difficult for me um, because of all the general responsibilities that I have in the day-to-day -day, and then the sheer depth that I try to go into in the content that I make to keep track of two different games where all of the lore is stored in really obscure little bits of information that I have to hunt down. Um, like an excessive number of them. <laughs> Uh, I have a really hard time keeping track of it, and it was really stressing me out. So that's, that's, it's more of a me thing than a cultural thing, if that makes sense. And that was kind of why I quit Start Rail. Uh, but I, I also kind of quit it because of some other reasons, like, um, Hold on, I kind of want to give you guys a chance to actually build my party, but maybe not. Maybe maybe I'll go I'll go I'll go grab some um artifact EXP because that's mindless while I finish this thought. Um I also left Star Rail not just for the lore thing, but because I was having a similar feeling when it came to the characters. They release I feel like a lot more characters and a lot faster uh in Star Rail than they do in Genshin, which isn't inherently a bad thing. But I was finding that I was having a hard time keeping up with them all between two games and building them all and keeping track of what materials I needed for multiple games. And I don't want to do spreadsheets. I don't care to. I think it's not something I'm interested in. And I also felt like the characters that I acquired mattered less and less. And as someone who's very big on hyper-investment into a few little characters, it, it just... It didn't feel like the kind of thing that I was going to be able to sustain long time. Long term. Sustain long time. Yes. <laughs> sustain long term. So it's 100% it's a, a me thing. 100% a me thing. It's It's got nothing to do with the game or the way the lore is written or anything else. Although I do have gripes with that particular arc. Um because like there's so many inconsistencies and there's not inconsistencies in the sense of like oh well some people have uh faulty recollections of events that happened versus others it, it just it felt like really lazy writing a few things and then some things that they've done don't make sense per the characters as we've been exposed to them so that kind of annoyed me and I was already kind of annoyed with other things. So that it was just, yeah, perfect storm. Anyway, don't think it's a cultural thing. Definitely think it's a me thing. More about my story preferences, my writing preferences, and, and what I'm looking for in, in different games. Like Genshin, I don't mind going around and finding things, like hunting things down um, lore-wise, because for me, the game is primarily a game about exploration. It's like an archaeology game, you know? So it feels appropriate, but Star Rail doesn't feel like that to me. And so I had less uh, willingness to participate in that. Um, and this is why I think I actually might be much more interested in playing something like Zenless Zone Zero, if not just playing Zenless, um, because it actually appeals to me directly it's a it's a game where there's no collectibles and everything you'll ever need to know is in a quest somewhere <laughs> which is nice for a secondary live service game too slow um for me anyway for my preferences i i can't do more than two and i don't think i can do two that are like super more heavy I feel like Zenless has the potential for me to be able to dive into a lot of interesting uh, physics-based theories, which sounds fun. I, I like I like that possibility, but um, yeah. Anyway, uh, that was a very long explanation for a very simple question. But Jeff, thank you for the ten gifted. 
And if you've got a membership, uh, you can now join Discord. <sighs> Which I need to say this because I feel like there's not enough characters in the description for the membership thingies to actually put this in there. Um, but you don't lose your Discord access when your membership expires. So if you get gifted a membership or you only support the channel for one month um, at the $1 tier or whatever, um, like it, it's basically serving as a self-moderation for the server, which makes it a lot easier for my moderators because <laughs> we don't have to deal with spam or hacking or anything like that because people are kind of pre-qualified before they get in as real individuals who aren't going to troll. Um... I just wanted to let people know if you end up with a free membership, it's basically a lifetime pass. So don't forget to go in there and go join us. We have fun conversations. Uh, French N, thanks for the super. I noticed that Raiden and Fosalors both use some techniques to transfer their mind elsewhere. Potentially a coincidence, but do you think there is perhaps more to that? Um, yes. How do I elaborate on this? It's kind of a yes or no question, but I feel like you are, you deserve a little more than just a yes, I do. <laughs> um, I think one of the core themes of the game kind of centers on how you perceive reality. And a lot of that, a lot of the philosophy behind that revolves around uh, figuring out what makes you, you. Like, is it your body? Is it your mind? Is it your soul? Is it a combination of all of them? Is it just your memories? If you lose your memories, are you the same person? So when a god is able to put themselves into different bodies, to me, that's them uh, saying that they're a being that is decidedly non-physical and can, you know, move their, their sh they could change their shape at will, so to speak, because they are who they are. I, I don't know if that really makes sense philosophically, actually, but that's kind of how I've been understanding it. Like, if Zhongli has an Exuvia, he probably has, like, a bunch of different Exuvias, and he can just kind of, like, possess each one like he's some kind of ghost. Whereas, I think humans and humanoids are kind of trapped into their fleshy prisons. <laughs> so then you get characters like this one, who's technically an android. And you have to ask, well, is this guy human? Does he have a soul? Does he have memories? Like, does he qualify? And because he has a vision, you can say confidently, yes, yes, he does. But then the new question becomes, why? So if he lost his body, could he just, you know, get a new one? Would he still be the same wanderer? Because he wasn't the same wanderer without his memories of Scaramouche, now was he? So, like, do memories make you you? But if you reincarnate and you forget all of your your memories, like, are you still you? I don't know. I think that's a core theme of the game. Um, so I think it's important. I think there is more to it. I think there's a reason why they keep doing it. Yes. Uh, Nova, what do I think about Columbina? She represents a seraphim angel, so maybe she's similar to Venti in the manga where he was an angel form. I haven't said anything about Columbina because... My ideas about who the Harbingers are and why they're a part of the Fatui seem to be quite different from what Hoyo is going for. And I feel like every time I have a pretty good handle on what they're trying to do, they change it. Well, they don't really change it, but they subvert my expectations and I have to start over. <laughs> um, so for that reason, I haven't really talked about a lot of the Harbingers um, at length yet. Um... I don't know that I have any theories about Columbina that aren't 
ones that other people have already shared. Because we just don't have a lot to go on. Too slow. But I do think... Well, that was an interesting way to take damage. I do think there's something to the idea of um, Seelies being based off of Sea Angels. And then... Those being associated with Celestia and then, you know, Colin Bina being associated with different types of angels. Angels having wings being related to birds. Her name being a reference to a bird. There, there's like, there's enough there that you're like, she might be an ex-celestial. But like, beyond that, it's very difficult to pin anything down. I think, personally. With any sort of confidence. I could give you a lot of BS about what I'd like to see for her. But, like, that's basically fan fiction. And that's a little bit different from a theory. Like, a theory has to be somewhat probable. Or at least has to have enough support in the game to make it that way. Um, When you go into fan fiction territory, it's more like, this would be cool if... And then there's, like, no real basis for it. <laughs> if that makes sense. It, there, there's a fine line to tread. Um, for me, it, I feel like everything I have to say about Colin Bina just kind of treads into fanfiction territory, so I just, I just don't. I just don't. Um, I got behind again. <laughs> this is, this is gonna be a recurring thing now that, uh, now that I, I replace stream elements. But I didn't like their moderation tools. I kept having to undo all of their modding, because, like... People would say completely banal things that were fine, but then stream elements would be like, no, this person is getting timed out. And I'm like, why? And it was being a pain in the ass, and I was having to spend a lot of time on it, so I didn't want to. You're dead. Okay. Me. Me in six. Oh, I missed one. That's unfortunate. We'll, we'll just sit here. We'll just sit here. I got free shit. Kanade17, thank you for the super. That was really generous. Thanks so much. Uh, what are my expectations for Natlan? So far, before we entered each region, we were given hints on what the nation would be like and where the story might go. How do you think the Archon quest will play out? Really curious. I have not given a lot of thought to Natlan. Uh, mostly because I'm still trying to figure out Fontaine. And Ramuria and all of that kind of stuff. So because of that, I haven't thought too much about it. Um, I have thought a little bit about it, though. Uh, but it's it's mostly in the context of work other people have done. Like, one thing I've been seeing a lot is is people saying that Notland's going to be full of um, dragon people. And while that is entirely possible, that is not what Nouvellet said. What he said is they entered a form of coexistence through evolution, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're humanoid. Unless there's something in the Chinese that suggests that they're humanoid. I, I actually have no idea. I did not double check the text to see. I, I don't double check all of the text. And even when I do, uh, people don't seem to like when I do that. So, I don't know. Um... But Natlin, Natlin, I would have I have a few expectations for now that they've mentioned dragons and war and stuff and like a level of coexistence. I almost wonder that since it's also labeled as a as a uh, nation of resurrection, I've been wondering if Natlin is a region of war, not because they're violent, but because. They're a nation of death and rebirth. Kind of like when you um, set fire to a field to make it more fertile. If that makes sense. Not that well, it doesn't it doesn't always make it more fertile. But like if you have a bunch of stuff on a field and you set fire to it, like the ashes of the stuff that perished and burned up, um, you know, feeds the next round of life and makes it really easy for that life to grow. Um so I almost wonder if it's like a nation of change instead. 
And so for that, I would expect not just... I would expect sort of um, a slightly subverted expectation in terms of... Instead of having humans and Celestia being uh, against dragons and dragons being uh, the enemy, finding a way to coexist with them, as in providing a third option for humanity, like saying we don't have to steal land or things that belong to, um, that naturally belong to um, one species. We can find ways to work and live together. And I think that might be a message which is going to go completely against the uh, ideal of Natlin being a nation of war. And that's kind of why I'm looking at like the whole resurrection thing and Ode to Resurrection um, and the fact that the nation is supposed to be one of war. Um, with kind of like a side eye being like, yeah, yeah, okay, I see. It, it's more of a death and rebirth, a cycle of renewal. You know, you have to... Um, something has to be destroyed for something new to be created, that kind of stuff, right? Um, I kind of, I kind of look at it from, from that perspective. For that reason, I almost wonder, um, if we're going to see not necessarily a new Archon being born, but a new method of rulership, um, over Natlin. Where the Archon themselves may be trying to find a way to coexist with the sovereign that's over there. And I wonder if the whole resurrection thing has to do with, you know, like Foslores having to um, destroy herself in order to give Nubalette back his own authority. Um, so like if your if your Archon can't live if they want to give an authority back to uh, the Sovereign, then maybe part of the challenge of Natlin is finding a way to be able to do that. To be able to find that balance. Or maybe it's a shared authority or something like that. Or maybe it's a fusion, like a marriage, but not necessarily a romantic or literal one, but like a chemical marriage. Like merging salt and water to get salt water. <laughs> that was a horrible example, but you know what I mean. Those are more or less my expectations for um, Natlin. I would also expect to see uh, quite a bit of um, lore surrounding sun gods, which I guess is super stereotypical and expected, but I'm sort of thinking of it in terms of um, Celestia and the Primordial One, because they... how do I put this? Um, you know, they're, they're kind of like the embodiments of light, but so is Nibelung. Um, Fundamental is speaking. There's little difference between so it's a little bit about planet, figuring out what role the sun plays for a planet. Fake can be truly arbitrary. And maybe how you can identify a fake sun. And the one other thing I want to point out is that um, if a lot of the game is centered around the themes of stars and that kind of stuff, suns are just stars. So I would expect to get some really good vision lore there. I've been saying that for three regions. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Like a political marriage. Uh, yeah, I don't know so much about political marriage. but You, you get the general idea. Um... I will say, I do expect um, Natlin to have not just Mesoamerican and South American, but North American and also African influences. All of them. Which means I hope this nation is the largest nation. So they can, like, you know, give an accurate uh, allotment of environment to each one and good representation to each one. And by, by North American, I, I'm not talking about like the U.S. necessarily. I'm talking about like pre-colonized U.S. 
the people who were originally here, who this land belongs to. It'd be really nice to see them get representation. Because that representation is so rare. So rare. Um, yeah. I think Whalemug did a pretty good video um, breaking down where he thought all of the uh, lore references were going to be for right now. I haven't actually done as much investigating into that as I should because, like I said, I'm still working on Fontaine stuff. And until my um, beginner's guide to Fontaine is able to be completed, I will probably keep working on Fontaine stuff specifically and not really think about Natlin. So that's probably all I've got for right now. Sorry, it's not that interesting, but that's kind of the extent that I have thought about Natlin. But I like dragons. So I will like Natlin. I think the one thing that worries me about Natlin is that Capitano is there. And having the captain go to um, a land with those sorts of influences, like cultural influences, just makes me think of Spanish colonization. And I don't like the implications of that. And I hope they subvert expectations. And that's like the one thing that worries me. So we'll see how that goes. Anywho, let me, let me, I, I missed a couple of, um, I missed a couple of super chats. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go back. I gotta go back for a second. Uh, Pleroma Prism, thank you for the super. In alchemy, marriage is a union of opposites. The red king sun and the white queen moon. Yes. That is the chemical marriage, most likely. Most likely. Alchemy really likes the union of opposites, which is why I think it's important that um, only one twin is considered a descender and the other isn't, is because you have to be opposite. If they were both descenders, they would not be able to be opposites. You know what I mean? Like one one twin has to live in the light, the other one has to live in the darkness. It, it's just the way it is for, for the alchemy to alchemize. <laughs> alchemize is a new word. I missed. I'm just taking pictures of you getting beat up by a bunch of sea critters. <laughs> I don't know why it's so sad. You know, I'm I'm really upset that Charlotte doesn't have a skill that's just called like she doesn't yell freeze frame. Like not only is she a camera person. But she's, she's cryo. You know? Like, she should yell freeze frame. At least once. But no, she says truth bomb. And like, okay. I'm, that's fine. But freeze frame was right there and you didn't take it. <laughs> I'm gonna be salty. Don't worry. Anyway. Anyway. Crystal! <laughs> oh, man. Osile, dragon or mimic? An excellent question. I'm gonna say dragon. But not the water sovereign dragon. That is an interesting thought. Because if he was a mimic, or at least if what we saw was a mimic, that would uh, mean that the real one is even bigger and scarier and... Yep. I don't I don't want to think about that. If that isn't if that was a mimic and like that's how much damage Osile's mimic can do, I am terrified of his actual form. But given given how Beist looked, and I don't think Beist was a um was a mimic, since that was his wife, unless his wife also makes mimics. Um, I'm gonna say they're probably probably dragons. Probably dragons. Prince Scar, thanks for the super. Your thoughts on Natlin and Resurrection reminded me of slime theory and how pyro slimes explode when they die. Not really a question, but something to think about. I think about that a lot. Actually. Um, 
There's been a couple of popular theories going around that say that there is no Murata in Natlin, and they're not wrong. Um, a lot of people have said that they think that Natlin's going to be based on the lost continent of Mu, because in uh, I guess in, I guess in Chinese the original reference to them is is more along the lines of a reference to the continent of Mu. But I kind of hate Mu. I also kind of hate Lemuria. Because I'm really salty because there's a lot of conspiracy theorists around me physically, like in real, the real world, um, who actually believe Lemuria is a real place and not just a continent hypothesized to exist at one point because lemurs exist on two different continents. That was why it was called Lemuria. And now they're like in the California mountains hunting for crystals on Mount Shasta. And they, it just, it, they just really bugs me. And so I'm really salty about the continent of Mu and Lemuria and stuff. And I, I don't... I don't want to have to actually... do real research on them. <laughs> Please don't make me. I'm gonna be so sad. <laughs> I thought that was kind of off topic, but... um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Anyway, I think I read those out of order. I'm sorry. Um, Jason, thanks for the super. Do you think Bennett will get lo a lore or more relevant lore in Natlin, given he's supposedly our main link so far? Um, are you talking about the fact that he looks kind of like a y Yonsen? I like I've seen that theory floating around. Um, I think it's possible, but. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up because Lisa got teased about being, oh, the youngest graduate in Sumeru Academia for like 200 years or whatever. And we're like, oh, man, Lisa's going to help us get to Sumeru and open some doors for us and all that kind of stuff. And then she wasn't involved at all. And then, oh, yeah, Baiju's probably going to be the one to introduce us to Dendro, and we're gonna, like, get there through the chasm and everything, and then Baiju didn't come out until months later. And then... Oh, Amber's grandpa is in, was from Leeway, and he's gone missing, so maybe Amber will be part of a Leeway event where we get to, like, track down her grandpa, and that never happened. You know, like, it's just over and over and over again getting kind of... shafted. Even Kaya and his Conria connection, like, there's there's a lot of hypotheses on how he's going to be relevant or if he's going to be relevant and all that. And so far, he's had a drink with Danesliff, and that's kind of it after four years. Too slow. So uh, to turn around and then say, like, oh, yeah, Bennett's totally going to become more relevant when we get to Natlin, I just feel like it's really irresponsible for me to kind of promote that idea right now. Just because there's been so many accounts of disappointment over and over and over again, I just feel like if I say anything along those lines, it's just going to set expectations um, in, a, in a way that uh, will make people very sad later. So I'm going to have to be the party pooper and say I don't think he's going to be lore relevant. He might get featured in, a, in, an, in, the, in an event or something. Or he might be, like, part of the event at the end of Fontaine that foreshadows the events of Natlin. Um, I think that's realistic. Uh, but will he have a huge role to play? I don't think so. Unfortunately, I don't think so. Okay, I was going to wander around Fontaine um, and actually let people pick my... Oh, wait. I didn't do my Inazuma... I didn't finish. I didn't finish. I didn't. F okay. Am I? Am I caught up? Am I caught? Oh. Break fate's chain. Um. It says your message was retracted, but I can read it. Do you not want me to read your super? Oh, faded. Did your super get buried too? Oh no. Hold up. Hold up, hold up. Give me a second. Relax. I will. I will I will go back and double check and see if there's someone I missed. Sometimes 
YouTube Studio is weird. And it doesn't show me everybody's things. So hold on a second. Let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. There's no Let me make sure I different miss anybody. Even the oh, there you are. I see around. you. Uh, Faded, I'm sorry I missed you, but thank you for the super. <laughs> Uh, you said, can you take a minute to acknowledge that you were 100% right about the, <laughs> about the people of Fontaine being ocean is, yeah, um, that was weird. I ha, you, you're going to find out like what my, what my reaction was as I, as I wrote it down, um, in, in the quest recap, but basically i kind of realized that they were actually gonna do it the, the thing that they were gonna make the thing happen um right when navia died or almost died that was when i was like oh oh they're gonna they're gonna do the thing and then they did the thing and i was like oh man i really did not think they would actually do that um i, I want to say though i actually thought everyone was gonna be dead like I kind of, and maybe maybe this still is sort of the case. I'm not sure yet because I don't really understand the timeline well. Who does really though? Let's be real. Um, but I thought that maybe Remus screwed up and then killed everybody. Uh, when he was trying to make all of those um golems and stuff, and like all the people kind of like got dissolved in his alchemical transmutation process and then you know they were just ghosts and so then uh i thought that ageria would have turned them into humans using her hydro powers and that's why they were oceanids so it was kind of weird to find out that like no no they're, they're just like a ton of oceanids floating around they were like dude we like freaking humans we all want to be the little mermaid and we kind of like want legs and blood and all that kind of stuff. And Ajiri was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, what? What? What do you mean? What do you mean that's what you're doing? But I was, I was still, it was still so weird to see Linny in the audience being like, wait, are we not real people? <laughs> but it also makes a lot of Renee's stuff make a lot more sense. Like it was kind of an inevitability. They really hid that well, though. That was one instance where Hoyo did a really good job um, at at a foreshadowing, but in a not obvious way. Because the only reason I started looking into this was because um, the Hoyo Creator Program has a thing where, you know, like every patch, they're just like, hey, here's a topic. Um, if you want to do stuff on here, uh, tag your video with uh, this tag, and then you'll be entered to win some Primo gems and stuff. Like that. That's just the creator program. And they were like, yeah, so um, the topic for 4.1 is Farina. And I'm just like, oh. Uh, <laughs> I got nothing. So I was just reviewing all of my notes over and over and over again, being like, okay, what do we actually know about Farina? What do we know about Vosalors? And I ended up with that. I had the wrong math, but the right answer. <laughs> that was fun. Anyway. One of the few instances where the real answer ended up being a little bit weirder than what I could come up with. That was actually cool. Actually, one cool thing that I, I realized afterwards, which should have actually been a real tip off for me, is that uh, the demon Fosalors is actually one that um, is known for drowning humans. And I was kind of wondering how they were going to do that, like how they were actually going to drown all the humans um, and like make her do her demon thing. Uh and still have her not be a villain. I wondered how they were going to do that. And and that they ended up being able to do it because of the prophecy and everything else. Like she forced the prophecy to happen. And because she forced the prophecy to happen, she basically drowned a lot of people. They didn't die, but she drowned them, you know? So I thought that was really cool. I thought that was super cool. Anyway, um, yeah, that was a moment 
I had to pause the game during Navia's trial. Because I was sitting there like, what? I'm sorry for your uh, headphone users. I'm sorry for headphone users right there. That was loud. And ship time. Officer, please, it's the photo shoot that killed him. Charlotte's fun. I really wish she did more damage, though. Just, just a little bit more. You know? Or that her base attack wasn't so low. It's so low. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, I, I did, I, I don't think I missed any others. Um, I don't think I'm, oh, oh no, I did. No, I didn't. Never mind. I lied. Okay, never mind. Oh, phew, that scared me. Um, I thought, I thought I missed another one. I didn't. Forget, 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 the forget, forget. Bird is an excellent publication. Um, Frank Spain, did you say that you wanted me to actually read your thing? Chief is always open to new ideas, but most importantly, they pay their writers on time. People don't die when drowned. I mean, <laughs> these ones didn't. These ones didn't. Hold up. I'm, uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta refresh my thing because now it's all wonky again and out of sync. And I don't want to be out of sync. I want to be on top of things and I never am. <sighs> Okay, so you did breaks fate, fate chain. You did want me to read your super chat. That's okay. You'll find there's always a new story. I know you just said yes, please, but I couldn't remember what I actually asked you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who's my main wanderer? And Kaya and Kave and I'll hate them and Ito. The Traveler is still asleep. It's all a dream. The game hasn't even truly begun. I mean, that's also a possibility. Actually, put a pin in that. We'll come back to that later. There, there's actually something I want to talk to you guys about, like a, 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 a Jungian thing. A Jungian. Jungian. Oh, my God. A Jungian thing. Yeah, put, a, put a pin in that. Yes, please read it. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I was, I was waiting for you. I got distracted. Um... Well, first off, thank you for the super again. Um, I don't know why it got retracted. That was weird. Um, I keep hearing people call the current Genshin story the Tivat chapter. Do you think Genshin could even continue after Tivat and its elements? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I think how you actually designed Genshin in like their planning stages to be like that. Um, meaning like they they said, okay, we could probably sustain this game realistically for like seven or maybe eight years with our current development power and that's probably enough for like um one game's life cycle and then we'll see what the health of the game is like at year say five and if it's really good then we'll plan the next part of the game and we'll um and, you know we'll we'll go from there um one thing that they've done already so i think this is a possibility is um in Honkai Impact, they finished their first story. So basically, the story of the original Honkai Impact 3rd is over. They finished it. Um, it's been complete. But they're launching the next chapter of the story. So here's what happens after that. You've got all new characters and all that kind of stuff. But you can still bring in the characters, I think, that you already had. So like you don't lose all your gotcha currency and whatnot. They didn't just make a whole new game. But they kind of rebuilt the game almost but they sort of make it, it made a best worse compatible that's kind of how i'm thinking about to that i think they'll do something similar with to that i do I, I think that's what they'll do if genshin is still healthy um and i almost wonder if that's why they're 
still holding off on endgame content. And don't tell me, oh, you know, they're not going to make another mode like Spiral Abyss. That doesn't mean anything. Making another mode like Spiral Abyss is not the only way to make an endgame mode. All right. They can do a lot of things. Like, you can already see that they're experimenting with things like the local legends, which are really hard. Um, comparatively to all the other content in Genshin. So, like, they could do, you know, little boss rush events. They can do events that don't have... Or they could do an endgame mode that doesn't have any um, rewards. Like, Primo Gem rewards, so people aren't really pressured to play it. They could just have it be, like, a choose-your-own-difficulty type thing. They could do a lot of different things. Um, but it, it's not outside of scope or even possibilities to do. Um, but I do think they're holding off on it for those sorts of reasons. I think they want it to be a little bit more scalable for the future. I really like being able to run across the water with Karina. <laughs> oh, I didn't do this one yet. I guess I can do this one. You guys can't do this. You don't know how to do this. Stop hitting the bubbles. You're ruining my... Fine, 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 fine. Sci-Fi Games! Thank you for the super! First super chat on YouTube or anything ever. Do you think the Hexen Circle gets power from dragons, visions, gods, or something else? Something else. Yeah, it is definitely something else. Um, The Hexen Circle is interesting because... Because, 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 because... Um... There are two ways to solve this puzzle, as far as I can tell. I'm going to solve it. This way. If I can hit the thing. Here it goes. Work. I think you could probably position it and merge them together and do it too, but um, I won't do it that way. Um, into that, you can actually use things like elemental ma energy and magic uh, without a vision. That is possible. It's just really difficult. And since, like, one of the witches is named after the first emanation of God, I got a, I got the feeling that, like, these are really, really, really powerful uh, beings that aren't really restricted by the same sorts of limitations that uh, most people on this continent are. So I, I'm going to say definitely option number three. Or was that four? I don't remember. How many did you actually present? I didn't even notice. The last one. That one. That's the one. That's what we're doing. There's a hilly billy. There's a hilly billy girl. With little hilly curls. All over his head. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Okay. I actually let you guys pick, pick my team. Like, I've been meaning to say that. Why does Nuvolet have stigmata aside from the Jesus imagery? Is there any lore about it? Was he imprisoned? Was he crucified? Does he have 12 white <laughs> Um. Actually, hold on. I'll show you why. I'll show you why. I'll show you why Nuvolet has the things on his There she go. There's one. What do you see on those hands? Do you see the eyes on the hands? Yeah? Yeah? Do you see them? Do you see them? Well? Do you see the eyes on his hands, too? Do you see them? Why can't I zoom in on this screen? This, the most annoying thing is that I can't zoom in. Also, you guys ever notice that, like, Scarabot is actually on tippy toes? Like a ballerina. That always makes me giggle. Um, so the other character that has been shown to have, uh, like, be a god inside hands in the same way that the the Shogun is, is Zhongli um, in, in cutscenes. And in those cutscenes, we actually, I don't think we can actually see the palms if they have eyes on them. But I have a sneaking suspicion that they might. Um, and I, I think that this is just kind of a dragon thing. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, 
But eyes in and of themselves are very important to dragons in, in Chinese mythology. Um, there's like this thing. There's, there's like there's like a proverb which I'm gonna butcher, so I apologize. But um, it's basically like what to give something the finishing touch and to bring life to it is to basically put the the pupil in the dragon's eye, which is why when they have that one uh, cutscene with Zhang Li giving Ajdaha eyes, that's a very uh, that was like a literal interpretation of that proverb. Where he was like putting the finishing touches on Ajdaha. Um, so it was a it was a very symbolic thing in that way. And also the fact that bishops over time lose their eyesight, I think, is also kind of symbolic. Um I, I think there's something to that here, but I don't have anything in particular that I could tell you about it. What bugs you most about the prophecy in Fontaine's story is that Celestia is irrelevant to the prophecy. The events make just as much, if not more, sense if you assume Celestia has been silent about the whole thing. Um, I'll disagree with you partly. But I go over that in depth in the recaps. So I don't really know if I'm going to do it here. Um, now let me, let me catch up a little bit on stuff. Uh, Wild 4, thanks for the super! Uh, when Nouvellet spoke on oceanid birthing rituals, and it made me wonder if the sheer amount of orphans is due to how oceanids reproduce. How do, what do you think? Um, I don't know if it has anything to do with orphans. I didn't really think that far ahead. I don't know that Fontaine has any more or less orphans than anywhere else. Um, I also... Even though he said... That, oh, these are oceanid birthing rituals and whatever. Like, I think that going to the prey at the Fountain of Lucene would have just impregnated the person who was praying, so to speak. I still think they have to give birth the normal way. So I don't necessarily, I, I feel like it wouldn't have been such a huge disconnect. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think a baby just materialized in front of them one morning. I feel like they still had to go through, like, the process. Um, but they couldn't actually get pregnant until they prayed. Which is actually kind of funny because the Fontanians are about to see a huge baby boom because they have no idea how human biology actually works in terms of contraception. So there's about to be a lot of surprise babies. Like a lot of them. A lot of them. Anyway... <laughs> Just, uh, I'm, I'm just, just saying, okay? I'm just saying. But yeah, Fountain of Lucene's kind of a weird thing. Um, I, I think it's kind of funny that Fosslores basically had to approve every child. But it does make you wonder, like, if Fontaine is the same size as all of the other regions, that means people have to make pilgrimages from all across Fontaine. Every corner of Fontaine, they have to come here and they have to pray or they won't get pregnant. It's like anti-birth control. I, I think it's funny. Anyway. Yeah, you know, if they didn't have to go through the process, it would be really, really, really weird if someone who wasn't from Fontaine married someone who was from Fontaine. You know? Like, that would be super weird to just one day wake up and be like, what do you mean there's a baby here? That's not how this works. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I know. I know. I've got. A, I got a lot of a lot of questions in chat and a lot to get through. I just. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta get through a couple more in the super chat, and then I, I promise I'll get back to some of the other ones in chat. I'm not ignoring you. There's just a lot. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Help. <laughs> uh, Kiri, thank you for the super. Hello to you as well. I was wondering about what you believed happened to Fosalor's divinity since we know that remnants of deceased gods linger like the Tataragami. Um, I feel like 
those only linger if you actually have resentments. So here's the thing. Fosalores isn't technically dead. Fosalores is an aspect of Farina, or perhaps Farina is an aspect of Fosalores. But the thing is, is when Fosalores destroyed herself, Farina became the real version of them, right? So if you have two people and one of them is real and the other one is an illusion, then if one of them dies, the other one becomes the real one. Does that make sense? That's kind of how I've been thinking about it. So I don't think there are any residuals, so to speak, with Fosalores because I feel like Farina is her residual. Because all she did was destroy her power, but the bulk of her power came from Nouvellet's authority, right? And if Nouvellet already has that power, then there's nothing there to go anywhere. Why am I back here? I didn't I didn't actually mean why how did I get back here? I don't understand. What what was I doing? Wasn't it just half of Farina? I mean, yeah. But I mean, if she's dead, then Farina is, you know, the only one left. So even if she was half, now she's the only one. You know what I mean? You thought that all of Fosalor's power went to one half losing their other half doesn't make them whole. It doesn't no, it doesn't make them whole. It makes them the only one left. Right? Think about it this way. If you have two pieces of pie, one is the left side and one is the right side. Well, if you take away one half of the pie, you only have one half left. So depending on how you rotate the pan, that half of the pie can be both the right or the left. It doesn't matter because there's only half of a pie there. You see what I'm saying? It's the only half of the pie. There's nothing to compare it to. If you cut it into a circle and bam, it's a half a pie, but smaller. I, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. It's not the perfect metaphor. I think it's a little bit messy because we don't actually know what destroying the thrones means, like for 100% for sure. Like I know what I, I theorize it to be, but we don't know 100% for sure confirmed in game what it, that actually means. And until we know what that actually means, I think it's really difficult to answer the question. You know what I mean? We're, we're lacking in information right now. Where is the the thingy that gives me the pooey pooey? The squid. Where's the squid? Squid! Squid! Where's the squid? Am I blind? Oh, it's over there. So is this pie cooked? I don't know. Use your imagination. Could be turkey pie, regular pie, I don't know. I don't know how to solve this puzzle. We're just gonna mess around with it until it comes about. Womp. I'm assuming. Mm, that's not right. All right, so we gotta we gotta do a lot of fussing around. I see. Whoops! Too far. There we go. That looks like it hits. Yay! Give me my monies. Woohoo! Mine, 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 mine. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, there, there's, there's so many questions. Okay, okay got, uh, guys, I'm not gonna be able to answer every question. I'm so sorry, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Okay. Um, is the Shumatsuban operations quest have good lore worth reading through the dialogue? I don't remember which one that is. I barely remember quests by their names. I, I can't answer that. Um. Why do the statues in Fontaine work? Does Nouvellet have power over the Archon infrastructure? The Archon infrastructure isn't what you think it is. It's just connected to the Leyline network. As long as the Leyline networks work, the statues of Seven work. Shower me with praise. Huh. 
What's my favorite pie and do you cut it in half horizontally or vertically? I make my pies square. <laughs> Is that cursed enough that my pies aren't pie? That they're square? Unnecessary. This is kind of fun. I like finding these just random platforms I can stand on in the middle of the water. Um. You've been wondering, due to the Fruit of Fulfillment weapon, still mentioning Queen Aranyani after the Archon quest, could weapons also be immune to Ermin's soul? Yes and yes. Uh, anything that the in-game characters... Um don't necessarily interact with like for example the lore of items like fruits vegetables plants uh mushrooms you know all those kind of consumable stuff all of those are sort of like things that are subject to change because people in the game you know they're the ones who remember the things about them and ermine soul tampers their memories not the actual text itself separating their memory of the text um Things like artifacts and weapons, which don't have those sorts of things associated with them, um, are completely immune to Ermin's soul, as far as we know. Um, those are the things that do not receive text changes. Now, that said, things like uh, enemy archive entries and stuff, those are subject to change, but not necessarily Ermin's soul tampering, as far as we can tell. Um, those do change. Like, the, the description for bishops actually changed after Nouvellet, uh well, after this patch. And that's how we learned that Hydro... Um, hydro bishops actually drink the water left behind by their deceased companions. So that when they're reborn into the world, they feel a tug on their inside. Of that piece of them pulling. And what's actually very interesting is if you go look at the Geo bishops and that little bone fragment that they carry... That's not one of their own bones that you pick up after they uh, after you kill them. That's a bone that they picked up. So the Geo Bishops do the same thing as the Hydro Bishops. They just keep a bone piece instead of drinking part of the Bishop. Anyway, cool stuff. <laughs> uh, does Freena's vision have her ambition or no? I mean, yeah, it should. Um. Visions are just wishes that have reached, well, the heavens, supposedly. But in this case, it just reached Nouvellet. Nouvellet was like, you earned this. Here, take it. <laughs> Thank you for the super pleroma, by the way. Um, Melissa, thanks for the super. After Fontaine and Arthas and Kreutz made me think about the legend of the Shattered Halbrid, do you think there's a link between the Traveler and the Halbrid? Um, okay, listen. I'm going to be real with you guys. I am not great at the halberd lore <laughs> i'm really not like fischl and her related literary properties are not my area of expertise however i would love to take this opportunity to shout out a fellow creator who's kind of obsessed with them and does a really nice job with them um and who also released a video very recently on that topic if you're not familiar with her her name is roosevelt um some people have said we sound kind of similar. <laughs> uh, which I think is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, if you if you like my stuff, you'll like her stuff. She's, she makes some really cool content. She has some really cool ideas. She really loves the Shattered Halberd. She loves doing stuff about Fischl. And she also loves Kaya. So if you're also here for Kaya, then, you know. I wanted to actually let you guys, like, Okay, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do this. All right. Make my team, okay? I'll, I'll, hold up. I will make a team for me. Make a team for me. I'll run around with this team. But anyway, I highly recommend you guys check out Roosevelt's channel. She has a really cool video out on the Shattered Halberd right now. Um, But I, I just, I, I, I can't keep track of that book. I keep having changing opinions on it. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll get to it eventually, like someday, but I just, I don't have anything on it. 
So yes, definitely. Um, her name is uh, Roosevelt. This. There, yeah, that one. Uh, I don't have Nilu. Being free in a Noel. My Noel isn't built, okay? Like my my Noel is level fifty. So is could you, why are you guys telling me to use characters that are not built? I'll hate them. I see Farina and Kave. I see another Kave. I see Hu Tao, Mona, Farina, and Jean. Are you looking at my Hu Tao? Oh, I guess I did start building her. <laughs> I, I guess she's kind of built. Her talents are level one, though. You can, like, can, can, I don't know why I'm all the way down here. Pick pick a built character. Pick pick someone who's level eighty and up. They're built. The ones who are below that are just leveled for their free fates. Oh, Ruzi is here. Hi, Ruzi. I promised I was going to stream with you at some point, and then I forgot. We still have to do that. <laughs> um. Just Google balls descending. Yeah. Yeah. That's real, real good. <laughs> Kindergarten, go Kui, Chi Chi, Sayu, and Nahida. Oh my god, you guys. I'm never letting you build my team again. What the hell? Why do all of you want me to use Bennett? Okay, there's a lot of Dias. There's a lot of Dias. Okay, we'll we'll take Dia. Um take Dia. I see I see a Dia and I see a Yenfei. So we'll we'll take we'll take Dia and Yenfei. Um There we go. Enti, Faria, Kaya, Yelan, Kave, Layla. Oh my god, there's so many. I don't need Le Layla if we're if we're doing Dia. Linny? You guys want Linny? Okay. We we can do Linny. Okay, every okay, everyone wants Farina too, but if I do this, I don't have it. Oh, well actually I do have a healer. I could do something really cursed. Um wait, what the hell? Why did you do that? No. I said Dia, Farina, Yenfei, and Linny. Save. We'll Alright, we're going with this true. because you guys said so. Um, but this means I have to do a cursed thing, okay? I I have to do a cursed thing. Um, I don't even know if I actually have all the pieces to do the cursed thing, but I'm gonna do the cursed thing. I might have the pieces. I don't I don't have the pieces to do the cursed thing. Oh no. Okay, well. That's okay. We'll do we'll do a two piece two piece I guess because that's what I have. Oh right, Dia's on clam. <laughs> uh, I don't know what else to put Dia on honestly. Cursed build. Wait, what happened to my thing? Oh. I think I was already on a maiden's thing. Hold on. I was. Okay. Um, in that case, what 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 am I what am I on? Clam. Where's my clam? Okay. Now now we have a cursed Yenfei. I hope you're all happy. Uh. Okay. Now I gotta I gotta rebuild her real quick. Um. Um, what if we did something silly? What if we did something silly? Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh, you can borrow pistols, it's fine. Uh, 67, 92, which is not great, but I'll take it. Is this pyro? Oh, that's HP, that's why. Hold up. 
Mm, you can borrow this. And... I guess you can borrow this. Okay. Hope you're all happy now. So many are, yeah, I, I, I have a lot. Okay, I have, I have, I have a lot. <laughs> I'm the kind of person who needs like an individual set for every character. So I, I have a lot and I forget to roll them. So they just sit in my inventory sometimes. Um, anyway, yes, I will hunt for treasure. There is no treasure. Okay, no treasure here. No one's going to know that reference. Why did I say it? Democracy lost? There was no actual poll. I was just picking the one I saw the most. It's not democracy, really. Uh, Eric, thanks for this super. What do you think? Uh, what do you make of finishing an Archon quest and having nothing on the next region's Archon? Is Incandescent Oda Resurrection for the Pyro Archon? Um, yeah, I guess I do think that's a bit strange, but they've been very, very, very light on the whole giving us crumbs about Natlin thing. So I'm like, on the one hand, I'm not surprised. On the other hand, I'm like, yeah, that's a little bit weird. Um, I've seen people say that they think uh, the Pyro Archon's name is going to be I'm. Not Amy, but I'm. Um, and I don't quite remember why. It is a little bit odd. But that does make me think that, like, either the Archon isn't present or they're not in rulership. Like, they've conceded their, their position to somebody else. Not necessarily their throne or authority. Maybe that's something that's still, like, in the process of transition. But I think um, maybe they're just not the one who's currently controlling things. We'll see. We'll see. It is a little bit odd, though. You're right. It, it's... No, you know what? I shouldn't say it's odd. I should say it's unusual. It is a break from the pattern. Although, to be fair, when we left Liwe, we actually got information on someone who wasn't the Archon anymore. So, uh? I guess, theoretically speaking, every time we go to a new nation, we keep getting information on the previous Archon and not necessarily the one that's ruling. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not that weird. Maybe it's not that weird. I actually feel like I got most of the chests in this area, so maybe I'm not actually... Um, have I ever done a deep dive into the connections between snakes and dragons? I wonder what implications that would bring since we have a snake-like god and stuff. I mean, we already know that snakes and dragons are, um, kin, canonically. So I'm, I'm not too interested in digging into their actual connections. I think the game basically said, yep, they're connected. They're, the, they're related. Deal with it. <laughs> and then they just kind of bounced. Um, so I'm not, I'm, I probably won't look into it, I guess is what I'm saying. Oh my god. How did I get this behind? Also, Windeen, thank you for the super. There's there's no message here, but thank you very much. Uh, Yvonne, how does the prophecy affect Rodea's story? Um, my people are used to the desert life. I don't they think it does. Like, I feel like I feel like Rodea, um, the way that she was set up, she was set up to be kind of paranoid, you know. And she didn't like the new ruler, meaning she didn't like Farina, or she didn't like Boslors. It's hard to say. We actually don't know. Although, did she ever meet Boslors? That's also hard to say. Um, hard to say. I don't know. Oh, I can't do that for in combat. Um, fine. Oh wait, Lenny doesn't have actual gear. Uh, hold on. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um. Um. Hang on. I gave most of his pieces to Kaveh because I cleared Blast Abyss. Um. With, uh. With, with Kaveh. This, this is, this is fine-ish. I just think his... Ratio is going to be kind of screwed. Yeah, like, what the hell is this? That one's fine, but now I have too much crit damage. Oh, it's an HP circlet. That's going to help. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think, I think, oh, has it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. 84 
for 167. Actually, we could we could go crit damage. That's pretty workable. Uh, we could borrow this, I guess. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. That that stays on Kabe. That's his. Uh, actually, what we could do is um something else. We could we could. I have a really good um. I have this. So I could change this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's better. His stats are better. Um. You couldn't afford to pay anything to say anything you're super. Uh, what? What? You can. You have a membership right now. You can actually uh, use the member thing to boost your message. You don't have to do a super. Members don't have to do supers, guys. They they can they get auto highlighted uh, messages in the chat. It's a, it's a slightly um a light, slightly different process to make it happen, but you can do that. Um, so you you don't have to pay twice. <laughs> don't worry about that. I wonder if there's a way to adjust my super chat settings so I can lower the requirements for that. I actually don't know what the requirements are or if they're set by YouTube or if that's something I can adjust. I should look into that. I will make a note. Okay, I will make a note. Did you miss a reply to your message? No, I probably just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't gotten to it yet. I'm behind, okay? I've got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. I have seven to go. I'm sorry. I was talking about Rodea. That's right. I was talking about Rodea and then I got distracted by Lenny. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm 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 paying attention. I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. Um Yeah, so like the thing about Rodea is that she was really paranoid. And the other thing that we've seen when it comes to oceans, I was trying to hit him. I'm not very good at hard shot play. Um thing we've seen about Ocean is, is that they're able to merge and separate with each other. And Rodea was just like, you know, if anyone merges with me and I don't like them, then they could poison my mind and they change who I am and I don't like that. So I kind of feel like that's sort of where she's at. Where she's... Um, where she doesn't want to have anyone else merge with her. I feel like she has trust issues, but I don't necessarily it's, think it's related to the Archon quest. I don't necessarily think it, it changed anything um, to find out everyone was Ocean. It's, other than the fact that it's possible that she was afraid that if she stayed in the waters, if any normal human got dissolved, then, you know, she'd be at risk of merging with them. I mean, I guess that's a real risk. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's a real risk but I don't necessarily think it's it's like a problem um okay I actually want to spend my resin I, I have resin uh Chris Neff thanks for the super I'm not sure if you saw my original super chat do you think Farina will gain divinity immortality and will help rule assist keep company with the new nouvellette maybe this happens in a future quest um hold on for one thing let me look I don't see you in the list I don't think your last one went through oh wait no you did I did answer that one. Oh wait no I didn't I didn't answer it I saw it. I didn't answer it. I missed it. I am very sorry. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I also missed Malachite's. Malachite, I'm sorry I missed yours, too. What is up with my list today? Holy cow. But thank you for the super. I got out just before Pila's age broke the timeline. Yeah, I saw the fallout of that. I was not about to hop into that. That was, yeah, that was another thing. Ah, uh, Star Rail timeline is a bit of a mess, not gonna lie. Um, God, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, your question was, do I think Farina will gain divinity immortality and will help so rule, assist, or keep company with the new Nouvellet? Maybe this happens in a future quest. I would say no. 
I would say there's little to no chance of that happening. Um, I think that'll make a lot of people who ship the two of them together a little bit sad. I don't think it'll ever happen. And the reason is because I don't think Farina wants that. Farina's whole story is about learning what it means to be herself and not pretending to be somebody else. And who she is is not the ruler of Fontaine. Like, she's basically established that. She doesn't want to be that. She didn't... She wasn't asked to leave the Palais Mamonia. She left on her own accord. She was like, I'm out. She's like, that's it. I'm done. So, I feel like her regaining divinity would actually be problematic towards the... Um, Like the theme of the of her story, right? Now oh, this guy still is not dead. I'm not good at playing Lenny. Can you tell? I'm not good at playing Lenny. I'm not good at playing archers in general, though. To be fair. Yay! I I think I... Fosalors and Farida are, are or they were the same person at one point, and so for me that means that at one point their wishes were the same. You know, I feel like they had the same kind of desire to be free of the oppression and to sort of live their lives for themselves. So I feel like if Brina were to become the ruler again, it just kind of undermines her entire story. And that's why I don't think it'll happen that she'll regain her divinity. It, it, it just goes against the, you know, what they had planned for her, basically. I don't have energy for Yenfei. I just realized that she probably has 133 ER is probably not enough for this team. But yeah, I don't I don't think it'll it'll happen. Hi, Rozukin. Thanks for the super. Um, love the lore videos. Thank you. Have you ever tried walking from Mondstadt to Inazuma? No, because I don't hate myself. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I won't do it. It's much easier to do now because you can just uh, water walk with Farina, I think. Right? Because she can walk on any body. I haven't actually tried to walk on any body of water outside of Fontaine with her, but I bet you can, right? Like, that should be a thing. Um, but yeah, I, I won't do that. Arthurian, thanks for the super. Uh, read a theory about Zhongli being demoted from Celestia. It makes connections between Zhongli and Sustainer. Um, and it made me think of the Geo statue and how seven, how it's the only statue holding a square. Um, all right. So the Geo statue holding a square probably has a little bit less to do. He is not really built well to use her burst, is she? Um, Here comes the hmm. How do I put this? I don't know how to put this, actually. <laughs> I, I don't know how to word my thoughts here. Uh, I actually probably shouldn't have put attack on um, Yanfei now because uh, I just realized that her shield, which is what I'm using, scales off of HP, which means it's very weak. Very weak like this. Very weak like this. Okay, hold up. I'm thinking. I'm thinking what what is happening in chat right now? What where do what are these gifteds? I mean virus thanks for the 10 gifted and Linda thank you as well for the 10 gifted. Holy cow. So many. So many. All right, so so uh, Zhongli holding a square. I think that has less to do with the whole descending from the sky thing and a little bit more to do with a Chinese uh, cosmology where they say that the earth is a cube and heaven is a circle. And if you look around a lot of the symbolism, you'll, you'll kind of start to see why I say that. 
So being the Geo Archon, the Archon of Earth, to me, means that, yeah, he should be holding a square, and he should be the only one holding a square, because everything else isn't the Earth. It's, you know, some other power. It should be round. Now, that said, the other thing I want to say about Zhang Li is I have a strong suspicion that Zhang Li is the only living God King. And by that, I mean, I think he is the same type of God King as Decarabian and Deshret and Remus. So I think Zhang Li is an actual God King. And Gui Zhang was someone, um, was like, the one that was supposed to be the Archon, in my opinion. And because of that, I also think that his, um, you know, stuff is a little bit different. Hola! So yeah, anyway, there's that. I want to know how my prototype Amber Yenfei is doing more damage sometimes than my Lenny. <laughs> that makes me very sad. Ow. I hit the wrong button. What else is new? I missed. Oh dear. And voila. <sighs> I'm not good at bows. No, get away from me. Zhang Li is over six thousand. Yeah. Um, just just to clarify one more thing. Um, both Gui Zhang. And Zhang Li were said to have descended. Um, it, it's not just Zhang Li. And the other thing is that Deshret is said to be the son of a sky, which could imply some kind of descension. And also, Remus did descend from the sky on his golden fortuna, which is apparently a ship in his case. So I would say that um, descended in this case is probably not the same as a descender descended. Because as we know, Descenders have another criteria of having to have a very particularly strong will. So, Remus was from space. No, he was probably from Celestia, but... You know. Uh, Jello! I finally got to yours. I'm so sorry. That took a while. Uh, thanks for the super anyway. I heard in the manga Arlequino was supposed to be evil or something. Seems like she's fine. Also, do you expect Enkidamiya to be revisited ever? Arlequino was not in the manga. So I don't know where that information got passed to you, but she wasn't there. So... Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people assume that she would be evil because of things that other characters have said about her. Uh, now... I don't think we've seen all there is to see of Arlequino in terms of her morality and whatnot. And I would hesitate before saying she's evil or not evil or whatever. I feel like that's a little bit of a misnomer because her sincerity in wanting to save the people of Fontaine is not necessarily different. Or it doesn't necessarily preclude her from, you know, being... having questionable morals. Which is what most people will assume is evil. Like... How do, how do, I, how do, I, how do I put this? The Fatui as an organization actually want to share, want to save people. They want to save the world. Like, that. that is part of what they want to do. You know? That, that's what they want to do. So it doesn't surprise me that our Lakino is sincere in her wish to save Fontaine and to help out and that she did a lot of good things. That doesn't necessarily mean she can't be a terrible person elsewhere. It doesn't mean she can't do bad things. Um, 
So I don't know where some people are getting this idea that, oh, well, she was originally supposed to be evil and now she's not. I think anyone who says that has kind of missed the point of her character. That's my opinion. Hi. Hmm. Well, I don't know why I did that. It doesn't heal as much as I'd like it to, but that might also be because Lenny's in the party. Wait, how does her passive work again? I forget. The healing bonus one. Farina's not Yenfei's. I know Yenfei doesn't have a healing passive bonus, okay? Healing bonus passive. I am having a dyslexic talking moment. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, as for the second part of the question, do you think we'll ever go back to Enkanamiya? Um... I would say probably not because it's an optional area. I think we could potentially go back there for like an event, but we already had an event there and I don't know that they'll do it again. Um, I think we will go back to other areas with Enkonomian architecture. Like if you did the Narts and Kreutz world quest, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's a few places that you get to go that have that architecture. Um... It's there again in the chasm. I mean, I think Enkonomiya style places will be places that we go. I just don't think they'll be, um, you know, we'll go back to actually Enkonomiya for a while. One thing that's really weird about Farina is I, I didn't realize at first that like her little, her, her attack, like her um, Numacia attack actually deals hydro damage. But it doesn't apply Hydro to enemies, but it will apply Hydro to items in the overworld, including puzzles that require Hydro to activate them. And I don't quite understand that mechanic. I don't understand if it's supposed to apply Hydro to enemies, but doesn't. Or if it's not supposed to apply Hydro to uh, anything else. But that's how it do. You think we'll get another Enka-like area? Yeah, that's basically what I mean. I think we'll get another Enka-like area or two or three or four or a dozen. Probably a lot. Genus, thanks for the super. Thanks to the videos in my mind's eye, Ashley. It's just Yen fate. Yeah. Yeah, that, that seems to be what's happened. Yeah. <laughs> that seems to be what... Wait a second. Ow, Kono, did you just... Super $50? Holy shit. Thanks? You did that just to say hi? Well, hi. I, I think you got the decimal place a little wrong, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Great vids, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. I know the vid is okay and passable if I get to the point where I hate it by the time I finished recording it. <laughs> uh, Nicholas, thank you for the super. If Genshin had a second uh, saga after the Archon quest... Do you think we'll be meeting the Hexen Circle, which is next? It's too early to speculate. I know, but they're important. I'm... All right. I have opinions on the Hexen Circle, and here's here's a hot take. Not a hot take. Here's, here's a un... Hmm. What do I want to say here? Here's an unsubstantiated theory. 4.3 will likely not have much of anything in it, okay? In terms of, like, quest, exploration, that kind of stuff. That follows a pattern of basically every region so far. Like, after you finish the Archon quest and you get the final map expansion, more or less, 
Like, you usually have one patch where they don't give you much of anything. Except maybe, like, you know, a flagship event. Um, and that's a lot so that people can just catch up. Because there, there's still a lot to go through. It took me a long time. The Archon quest itself is six hours long. Okay? Six hours. And two hours of that was actually kind of meaningless and pointless. And I, it felt like wasting my time. But the rest of it was actually really, really good. But I digress. Um, so the next patch shouldn't have anything. However, 4.4 should have something interesting. In it. Um, now I think 4.4 or 4.5 is similar. To, what, what happened in 3.4? Was 3.4 Kari Bear or was 3.5 Kari Bear? 3.5 was the parry event, wasn't it? Or was 3.4 parry? Was that 3.6? Oh god, I can't remember. 4.3 and 4.4 is filler. 4.4 is likely lantern right again to save them pretty So 4.5 should be Dane's lift if we follow a pattern. ish because 4.6 should be farina's second story quest if we follow nahida and raiden's patterns i think and if that's the case yeah so 4.5 4 should be dane's lift now i think dane's lift might introduce us to the hexen circle this this is like a really baseless theory but there's nothing else in Fontaine I really feel like he could do. And we know that the Hexen Circle has Abyssal Ties. And that they're like a really powerful group of like crazy ladies. And I went back to re-watch the Hexen Circle trailer that we got from the, that one event. And that was really interesting because I didn't realize that Alice was kind of reprimanding Nicole in that... Um, in that video, it's not obvious. But now that we can absolutely confirm without a shadow of a doubt that the um, red tea set is Nicole's, and we if you follow the way the camera pans, you can see that Alice is actually reprimanding Nicole, being like, hey, we don't need to have bad blood between us just because of some prophecies, which is something that Nicole kind of specializes in. And it pans over to her tea set. So like, I'm actually wondering, since Nicole showed up here, if we're going to get introduced to one of our first Texan Circle members by Dane's Lift. Because the timing should line up there really well. I don't know if I have any chests to get left. Maybe we should go to Enkanomia, because I actually have things to do there. I don't know that I have anything else to do up here. I, I think I cleared out Fontaine. I had a lot of meetings this month. A lot of meetings where I was just running around mindlessly uh, farming things. Maybe we'll go to Enka. I have sigils I need to actually figure out where they go. <laughs> Do we think Nouvellet will get the next story quest? Because he's the one ruling Fontaine. It's possible that we get Nouvellet's story quest before we get at the same time. One in each half of the patch. Um, it is a rather unique situation that we're in where we have two rulers of Fontaine. But I feel like I feel like they're gonna do Farina because she she still is like the flagship Archon for Hoyo. Like she's still being marketed that way. Um, so I think it, it will be hers. But I do think you're right in the sense that we should probably expect two of them because of Nubilet. Oh my god. Linny, please. Maybe I'll just make machine gun Linny. Maybe I'll forget about charge attack Linny and just make machine gun Linny. Pew 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 pew! I mean, his combo's so cool. I'll do physical Linny. Do fizzle. Fin finny. Oh, that's the name of my dog. <laughs> physical Linny is Finny. Yeah, that's. Oh, she perked up. Uh <laughs> Hope they don't make her story quest today. I don't think they will because of how they handled her first one. I mean, theoretically speaking, A's um 
you know, A's story quest also wasn't a date. It just, I don't think it was localized well to the point where it was obvious that it wasn't. Like, I totally understand why it's been interpreted as a date. Even I used to, but then I've, I've gone through it like four or five times at this point. Ow. I've gone through it like four or five times at this point, and um, it's still not obvious, but you can kind of see what they were going for, even though I don't think they did it well. Um, it, it wasn't really a date. It just kind of felt like one. It's that awkward moment where you ask someone to like go do something with you and you think that they said yes to go on a date with you and then you find out that they actually just wanted to do the thing and you happen to ask them to go so it isn't actually a date in their head. It feels like that. <laughs> Not speaking from personal experience or anything. It's just um, one of those things. One of those things. Actually, there's a treasure hunt I've been meaning to do. I don't actually know if I finished it. This is the problem. I can't remember. Oh, oh, I got the little fantasy book. This book is so cool. So pretty. What a nice memento. I still have to go find, like... Wait, what, what is this? Did I forget to, like, redeem these? I still have to go find these, actually. I don't know where these are. <clears throat> Can I please do research about Arlequino's role in Fontaine Archon Quest? Well, her role was pretty straightforward. I don't think I need to do anything more with that. I mean, she was there. Ayaka was a date, though. Yeah, it kind of was. Uh, do you think we'll meet Sandrone in a Fontaine interlude quest? I highly doubt they wouldn't include her at all in Fontaine due to a lot of the shared symbolism and aesthetics. Not even just aesthetics, man. Like, look at Mary Ann. That, that's young Sandrone, isn't it? Is, is that not young Sandrone? <laughs> yeah. I, I really feel like 4.3 is going to be really light, and then I feel like every patch after that is not going to be light. I, I do wonder if um, Sandron's going to be one of those ones like Scara who show up during an event first and then become relevant. But, uh, yeah. Sandron Elaine, almost certain. Yeah, yeah. I, that's kind of where I'm at with that one, too. Um, I was trying to figure out if I actually did these. I don't, I don't actually remember. She should be relevant in Fontaine. I mean, Scar wasn't really relevant in Inazuma. He was relevant in Sumeru. I still think I know what they're going to do with her story. I, I'm still pretty sure I have a good idea what they're going to do with her story. I still think that they're going to make it so that Elaine is the big robot that's puppeting, um, that's puppeting like a, a handcrafted recreation of his little sister who passed away. And, uh, we're going to see that robot come up with her own identity and like gain sentience. And that's why she's going to be the one who's going to be playable. You watch. That's what's going to happen. That's my prediction. Lucid Gate, thanks for the super. You just said hi. So hello. A very delayed hello. It's almost an echo. An echo hello. A, 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 a echo. Mm, that's fun. Someone says hello back to you. It's a haleko. That's a fun word. I'm going to keep that. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I'm going to keep it. Koryuri, thanks for the super. Do you think our typical Archon Act 2 quest for this upcoming year will be Freena or Nouvellet? I think I just did that, but I didn't actually respond to you. I just responded in general. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say both. I'm going to say both, but probably in different patches. That's my, that's my final take on that. With her is internet hell. I mean, yes. W what's the context? I don't think you want me to rant on my opinions of short form content. I really don't think that's the case. Uh, Rep234, thanks again for the super. What are your thoughts on the Narwhal Archon quest lore? 
I don't even remember the Narwhal Archon quest part. Um, hold up. Let's take a look. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, right, right, right. The, the only thing I remember from this that I actually thought was interesting um, was the last bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was just the last bit that I thought was worth remembering. Mm. Yeah, the last three paragraphs. And then there are these so-called gods that are determined to save everything worth saving and devour everything that should be devoured until the end of time, until the sea of stars recess into nothing but dying embers, until a newborn world moves for the first time in the stomach of the whale. Will be no more sins, no more sadness, no more tears because everything died with the ancient stars. Okay, let me give you a theory. Um, the I, I kind of. Oh, hey, look, a chest! But at least it doesn't hide. Yeah. So, I said this in, in, I think, two different videos now. Um, and I think it's going to go into a third at this point. I feel like I need to expand on, on just one idea and why I think it's the case. The narwhal is something called a star beast. We, we can basically say that with certainty. Like, he's called the star swallowing narwhal in Chinese, I believe. Um, he's called the all devouring narwhal in English. Um, you know what? We could go, I could go show you guys why I say this too. Uh, let me go kill these things so I don't lose this chest and, um, and then we'll go do that. We'll do that. I'll, 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 I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you what I mean. Um, basically, he's a star beast. And my whole theory right now is that, you know, humans are ascending to be stars. I think the travelers are stars. I think, um, I think visions are also stars, fragments of stars. I, I think the Gnosis and the Descender, the third Descender, um, I think they were a star. Um, I, I feel like I feel like Tafat in general feels like a uh, cosmological genesis. I'm thinking Ermintzel is actually like the Lanakia cluster kind of thing. Um, I'm thinking it's something similar to that, like a, the birth of a young universe. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff like that that I think, um, and the narwhal in and of itself is one of those things. So when we talk about the primordial one coming here and putting up a firmament to try and protect things, I think it's to protect us from people or from from people from beings like the all devouring narwhal, these star beasts that want to devour everything. Because the star beast to me, or at least the narwhal, is just a black hole. It's the manifestation of a black hole, which is just a dead star because dead stars black holes are, are things that swallow everything you know in the universe so you get a whole like cluster of those right and you have a real recipe for disaster so if, if you sit there trying to protect the world by sort of isolating it like that makes a lot of sense to me But I'm starting to think that a lot of the celestial ties, when we talk about them and that kind of stuff, I feel like they're becoming a lot more literal than I originally thought them to be. Like, I thought the whole star thing might have just been one of those, um, oh, we're being metaphorical, you know, they're they're an alien life form that traveled um, in a spaceship and it looks like a star. But like, now I'm sitting here going, no, I think they might have actually been literally stars, but like fantasy stars. <laughs> like, I, I think that might be what's going on. I really think to that might end up being the birth of a new, new universe. I think it was a world that was supposed to be born and then ended up not being born. I think the eggshell never cracked. I think the world never opened. And that's kind of why everyone's like, quote unquote, dead. Not necessarily because they died, but because you just never had a chance to be born because the world isn't made yet. If that makes sense. It gets really complicated, which is why I actually haven't made this like into a properly thought out video or anything. Um, but those are along the lines of what I'm thinking. And that's what I was thinking when I was reading the Narwhal's description. Um, when it comes to stuff like Sertology and Ryan Daughter and what they're attempting to do, 
Like, I can't help but notice the similarities between the Rift Wolves and the Golden Rift Lord specifically and the Narwhal. They look so similar to me. Which I know sounds weird because one is a, you know, aquatic and the other is a dog. But, like, seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking when I say that. Like, it's... Okay, look! Mine! There's all sorts of fun stuff out here, isn't there? Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought, but um, that was <laughs> that was kind of where I was going with it. Lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought. What was the other thing? I wanted to mention one other thing. Everything died with the ancient stars. Yeah, okay, so so this this is something where I was looking at Star Rail's lore, and I'm just like, hmm, I think this might be the way that Hoyo's trying to very loosely connect their games together, but not, like, directly connect. And to place... To place Genshin in the timeline of games, I'm almost wondering if it's, like, a prequel to everything. In a way. Because it feels like it might be the birth of a galaxy. Which sounds odd, I realize, as I say it out loud. But in Star Rail... The most ancient entity that's ever mentioned are the Leviathans. And they were these giant star beasts, essentially, that predated the eons. And that kind of, you know, mirrors this whole thing about, like, dragons being um, uh, succeeded by archons, in, in a way. A little bit different. Much different cosmological level. But I think it's very interesting that Leviathans are, like, these big cosmic dragons were the original entities in that game. And then they're also kind of the original entities in Genshin. And I think thematically, at least, there's a tie there. And I think it's also quite interesting because Genshin focuses on uh, Orphic mythology, specifically when it comes to its creation story, or at least the only one that we have so far. Um, and in that story, uh, two dragons, Kronos, and, well, Kronos Ion specifically, and, um, oh no, I'm gonna blank, I'm gonna blank, I'm gonna blank, I'm gonna blank. It's not a Nanki, is it? It's not a Nanki, oh no. Why am I blanking on names? Okay, well, two. <laughs> uh, time and inevitability, so it must have been a Nanki. Um, time and inevitability were two dragon-like entities that existed within the bounds of chaos, which in this case would just be the depths of space. And together they created the world egg, this cosmic egg, and from that egg was birthed Phanus, and Phanus was the god of creation, god of life, and basically he didn't create life, or they didn't create life, he was... Sorry, they were very androgynous. They always draw them with a penis, so I just kind of... My brain auto-pronouns him. I did it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mythological deity from thousands of years ago. Um, they didn't create all of the gods that came afterwards or the world of reality or light or anything else. They just kick-started creation, right? So if I, if, I, if I look at it that way, I start to look at other Chinese myths where you see like Nuwa and Fushi being the ones who created humans in some instances. I know that that's dependent on which myth you read. I know that Fushi isn't always involved. Um, but like the, the symbolism of twin dragons coming together to create life, essentially, is a repeating theme that I think they're going for throughout their game. So um, that was a really, really, really long sidebar. But yeah, I have thoughts, but not thoughts that I haven't technically expressed in other videos or theories or anything. Um, yeah. I feel like there's more down here, but maybe there isn't. Maybe I'm just crazy. I want to go out to the boats. I haven't been to the boats. No, Lenny, you're not allowed to dive. You must! Can I dive here? <gasps> you can't dive in this water. It uses normal stamina. I just realized this is water outside of Fontaine. It's not the hoverable water. Mm. I really hope they add underwater exploration to other regions. Even if it's only like in some enclosed areas. Like I'd love to explore Cider Lake. I think that would be really cool. 
think that'd be really, really, really cool if they could do that. What about Sturdy Logi and the Visionary? What about them? That's that's not that's not a very specific question. What am I what am I supposed to do with that? Uh Crazy Quilt, thank you for your super chat. Uh love your streams and content. What well, thank you. Uh question. Who is my favorite Archon lore and all? Oh no. Mm -hmm. I think it's a toss-up between um Zhongli and Farina right now. Um Zhongli, not necessarily because he did anything interesting, but because of all of the really suspicious connections that he has that make absolutely no sense, but he still has them, and they haunt me, and I get mad about it. <laughs> um, I, I feel like there's a lot more to his story that just isn't explored, and I'm very intrigued. And because I am intrigued, he becomes one of my favorites. I just want to go to the other end of the boat, Paimon. Don't even let me do that. So rude. Okay, fine. We'll go back up. Um, but as for Farina, I just thought her story was really well done. I think they did a really good job of, like, uh, presenting her challenges. I think she's just really fleshed out as a character. So I also really like her. I mean, I like most of the Archons. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously biased and a little bit bitter against A, but that's mostly because... Her son is my favorite character, and so, you know, I, I have reasonable bias. <laughs> you know, reasonable bias. But if I had to list them, I'd probably say Farina, Zhongli, Venti, Nahida, and um, A, in, in probably that order. Nahida's great. I do like her a lot. It's just that the intrigue behind... Um, Zhongli and Venti's past and all the shit that they know and don't tell us um, keeps me invested. Oh, I meant to dive. I don't know why I didn't do that. My bad. I'll wait for this end. What do I feel about A's story quests? They're fine. I don't have any problems with them. I think the first one was localized weirdly, but I don't think there's any problem with it. Like, fundamentally. Bleroma Prism, thanks again for the super chat. Uh, Kilo, Wind equals Anemo. Ermansol equals Dendro. Primordial Sea equals Hydro. Other elements might have other meta features of to that. Yeah. I think that is true. Actually, um, I don't know if you've read the... Oh, hey. I, did, I fell. Um, I don't know if you've read the Wings of... I think they were the Sumeru wings, the ones you get from the rep Reputation quest. Um, I think those ones actually talk about the Dendro Archon, the Animo Archon, and the Electro Archon sitting down to have a chat. And one thing that the Electro Archon in that wing set says is that they are the brain? Almost? I think that's what it is? I think I, think I might actually have to, like, pause and go. You might have to pause and go real quick. Um, the, a wooden thing made of electro. This is another reason why I still think she might be the shoe yokai. But anyway, because she's made of wood. Um, it says the wooden object said that all mortal thought was the work of electricity. So electricity is thoughts, which I thought was actually quite interesting, um, because technically, like in the brain, right, we're we're basically firing off synapses, we're we're pushing electrical signals through our body at all given moments of the day. Um, we're very electrically conductive, um, so I, I think that was that was interesting to see, especially if you think about elements having some sort of other meta purpose. And maybe that's why we haven't seen hide or hair of the, um, you know, Electro Sovereign. I actually need to do the Otter Quest at some point. I, I should really do that. Um, I still haven't. As you can see, there's otters everywhere. Eventually I'll do it. Hi. Hello, little ones. 
They're all very cute. Um. Yeah. Makes sense with Euthymia. Yeah. Unrelated. You make a good teacher. It's easy to understand you. Oh, good. I'm not stuttering all over my words and losing my train of thought and saying a lot of nonsensical things and hoping they make sense. I'm glad you guys can parse that language. Sometimes I leave my speech to text on on my phone and then I just talk into the void and then I see what happens and uh, it's usually very incomprehensible. <laughs> Just a throwaway thought, what if the hands below Zhongli and Raiden in their Archon form are their divine thrones? I mean, yeah, that's possible. It's possible they have, like, a real body somewhere, you know? Kind of like how Skarmouche was, like, inside um, the robot during the quest, right? Before he became the Wanderer. It makes you wonder if, like, other Archons might actually have their real selves inside of a giant thing somewhere else that gets projected out into the world. I mean, that, that is a possibility. Very curious. Very curious. Very curious. Katie Bird, thanks for the super. Aw, sending some positive energy to everyone. That's sweet. Everybody takes some good vibes. There's enough to go around. Everybody gotta have good, good vibes. Gotta have good vibes and hydration. Mm. My dogs were still mad at me. They, uh, they rolled in turkey shit today, and so they had to have bath time, and so now they're really mad at me. <laughs> uh, I love getting the stink eye from a dog. It's so unthreatening. It just, they just look so disgruntled. Um, I still think it's really funny that my dogs are, like, not intentionally at all named after Nouvellet and Risley. Like, not on purpose and not directly. Like, they're not actually called Nouvellet and Risley. They're, they're... I've got one dog actually named Leviathan, and I've got another dog named Fen Russelfar. So one of them is actually named after the Leviathan that Nouvellet is, and then the other one is actually named after, like, a giant wolf, which is what Nouvellet reference. Not Nouvellet, sorry, what Risley references. I just think that's super funny. And I think the best part, too, is that they are, they're actually, um, Numacia coded, because Fenris is, um, is black and white, and then Levi is yellow. <laughs> That was such a hilarious thing to realize. Anyway, sorry. I'm 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 off topic. Um Sheenus, thank you so much for the super. Uh you said if we do get some Sandrone equals Elaine bot, I wonder if we'll get a chance to hear his opinion on the Fontaine in Research Institute of Technology and what it has become. If he's even close enough to mortal Elaine at this point for him to care. I think he does care. Um Okay, so for those of you who didn't do the quest, I'm, I'm probably just going to like bounce around irrelevant areas at this point. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys to do something if you haven't already, all right? If you haven't already, come over here, okay? And there will be a quest that you can trigger. Sir Arthur will go missing, okay? Sir Arthur will go missing. Do this quest. It's a little long. You follow a little Melazine and uh, a Gardamek lie detector named Curve. Um, and it seems kind of irrelevant, but the whole thing is about this the work of one robot researcher. Okay? And at the end of this quest, there is a nugget about Syndrome. Which basically tells you that they do care about what's going on. They have very strong opinions about it. They are not happy about it. And uh, they're quite violent. Yeah? You don't want to get spoiled, plug your ears for a couple minutes. Um, or for like a minute. But like basically, Syndrome finds out that this one dude um, is trying to basically leverage the research of a well-respected at one point... Um, machinist essentially or engineer i guess i'll call them and uh <laughs> after the quest the police go looking for him but he's kind of gone missing the dude that caused all the problems and um he's found again tied up hands and feet 
in the opera epicles and his tongue has been cut out and there's a note in it apologizing for causing any trouble hmm. to the traveler and uh, their companions. So they were not happy about this guy utilizing the research for his own purposes and for ill purposes that he didn't like. And the other thing to really note here, um, it's kind of like the ethics behind it, I guess, for lack of a better term. One one line that Wanderer has about oh wait hold up no it is it is voiceover it's just right yeah voiceover I don't go in here very often sorry this one oh shoot it wasn't this line it wasn't this line. I don't think it's child's line either. Shoot, 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 shoot. Where was that line? I gotta remember where it is. I gotta remember where it is. Oh, I don't remember. I'll find it. I'll find it. Anyway. I'll find it eventually. I, I gotta figure out where it is. I gotta put it in a citation anyway. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that Elaine, who is who I think Syndrome is, um, I think he has very strong opinions about how the research is used and what's going on. I don't necessarily think he cares about what happens to the Institute. Um, I think it matters a little bit more if he values whatever the Institute was researching. I don't feel like he does value what the researcher, what the um, institute is currently researching, so I don't think he cares too much about what's going on there. But I think there are certain things, uh, especially in the realms of robotics, that he cares very much about and has very strong opinions on um, that matter that he'll he'll talk about. I gotta remember where this line is. Oh wait. This is Oh, I guess you missed the stream when I when I uh, accidentally got to tar Yeah, okay, so listen. I don't even know if it's in my wish history. It probably is. Arena actually I had horrible luck with. I don't even know if uh, Tartags is still in here, but let's find out. Um, He really wanted to come onto my account. It was really funny. I had got new Valette and I think I was just like, I think I YOLO'd a 10. Or no, I think I put in a single. I put in a single and I got, Kyle just kind of like appeared. I was like four, I was at like four pity. I'm going to find it because I want, I, I need people to believe me. Um, Was he before new Valette? Maybe he was before Nuvolet. I think I wanted. I think I wanted to see if I could get a Fremen egg because I was think I was at like nine pity for the four star. And I was just like, well, if I throw one, I'll I, I'll get a four star. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, so here's Linny. One, two, three, four. But then if you count my my uh. My four stars is like one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't remember if this counts. Seven, eight. I think the five star counts. Well, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Anyway, I figured if I just threw like one or two singles, I could get Fremenet and then just have like all of them. And I didn't get Fremenet. I, I, I only have the event one. Um, But he literally came home in a single summon. A single summon. Wait, no, I did three. I did three. Okay, yeah, no, I did three. I had three fates from like the battle pass or something. Because you can see I did. Um, you can see the dates. It's August, August, August 15th. Um, oops, wrong way. And then September. <laughs> September. <laughs> okay. Anyway, 
I didn't actively pull up for him, but he heard me talking shit, so he decided to show up. So now I'm collecting harbingers. I got the one harbinger I wasn't really interested in getting, so I was just like, well, I better collect them all now. You got child at 83, I'm so lucky. Listen, I got Hu Tao at like 15. I was going for Toma. I didn't even get a Toma. Until like 80. The characters that you don't want will always show up. Okay, they'll always show up. You cannot escape them. They will hunt you to the ends of the earth. I'm going around in circles again. Um, yeah, don't build pity, guys, or child will show up. <laughs> it's okay. He's he's pretty fun to play in the overworld sometimes. And just to be clear, I don't hate him. I just like I'm just not particularly fond of him, but I like his lore. Um, it's just like as as like one complete package, he, he's not my favorite trope. People seem to misinterpret this whole like I hate child thing. I don't I don't hate him. I just like he he's just not. He's just he doesn't have the overall appeal of the types of characters that I like. Not favored. I feel like I need to be clear on that. There's like there's like one character in this game that's not an like a reprehensible villain like a czar that I, I actually hate. I think there's only like one. Blue Moon, thank you for the super. I know they're technically considered dead, but since Silver and Malus turned into Oceanids, couldn't they technically come back at some point? No, I don't think so. Um, the reason is, is because I don't think Nouvellet would actually um, try to revive them. I feel like that would be really weird for him to do. Like, he would be kind of cheating death at that point. But, like, even then, you got to remember that, like, oceanids are water beings, right? So, like, when you're made of water, once you go into the water, like, you're going to start picking up all of the contaminants within the water, right? Like, if someone dumps Coca-Cola in the water, well, and you're a being made of water, well, guess what? Now you're made up of some part Coca-Cola, right? And you don't really have a choice on whether or not you consume that. So when we talk about pure waters and stuff, like, that's kind of what it means. Like, you got you got to keep... In order for you to keep your identity, you kind of can't come into contact with much. Hey, look, a floating box. Let's investigate the floating box. I wanted... Oh, it's just not rendered. Okay, never mind. That's less fun. I wanted a floating box. Um, so I don't, I don't think he'll come back. Uh, plus, the one who created the humans to begin with was Jiria, and I just I don't I don't know that Nuvolet is interested in creating humans. He forgave them, yeah, he gave them real blood, but I don't think he could even like pluck out their consciousnesses to revive them. Well, that was a dumb place to use it. Yay! I found a chest. Nyaha! We can definitely Mine. Games. Okay, the adrenaline's over. I got my endorphins! Oops. I'm trapped. Stara, help me! Oh my god, I'm really trapped. Okay. Get me out of here! May we see your Farina build, please? Uh, yeah. We can do that. That's not what I wanted. This is my Farina! 50, 184, 145. Um, let's see. I have four golden troop. Not the best. But they're passable. Some of them are okay. Some of them are okay. Yeah, the circlet's not great. I have had really bad luck with uh, golden troop circlets. As you can see, these are the ones I haven't gotten rid of. 
And she doesn't need any more crit rate, you know? So, like, I get crit rate ones, but I don't really need to roll them. And even when I roll them, they roll attack, so it's like... Yeah. So this is the best I got. But, I mean, she's still quite good. Festering Desire gives her an additional 12% crit rate, so she ends up with, like, 66 here. So, yeah. It's not bad. She's cool. I quite like her. Um, I can't level her up anymore yet, though. I haven't decided... I want to give her a crown, but I don't know what I want to give it on. I'm probably this one, but I kind of just want to crown the crew, just because. You're giving Dia the March set? That's cool. I bet that'll work out okay. You can kind of stack crit damage on her. That'll work out. Aya G, thanks for the super. What do you think of the idea that Makoto and A uh, being Raiju, the lightning yokai who can basically be any animal? Yeah, I think it's possible. I, I am a little annoyed that um, those two are the ones... That... There's still chests up there? What the hell? I'm still annoyed that, like, the twins are the ones that we still don't know what they were. Like, I'm, I'm so annoyed by this unreasonably annoyed by this mind you like I, i'm actually legitimately upset sometimes about it where is this chest oh i gotta wait oh it's like up up it's like up 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 okay well that is outside of uh my ability to climb i think so Maybe we don't do that. Maybe maybe we go back to the entrance and uh, try this again. But yeah, I I, I feel like it's possible. Um, I think given that Scar is supposed to be Fujin, um, I think it's realistic that you know, Raiden is Raijin. It's just it feels too simple. Because then, in that case, what was Raijin? You know what I mean? I, I guess that part bothers me. Like, just because I know their mythological inspiration doesn't mean that I actually know, like, what they were. In-game. Canonically. Like, sure, you can say Zhang Li is a dragon, for example. But, like, he's not a bishop dragon. He's, like, an adeptus dragon. Which is a totally different thing. But then, like, if you look at someone and say, oh, they're an Adeptus, you're like, well, what kind of animal were they? And you're like, I don't know. Were they a bird? Were they a deer? Were they a dog? What do you mean there's nothing up here? Wait, what? Am, am, I, am, I, am I crazy? This is where it was. Wait. <gasps> what? I am so confused. I'm so confused. Wait, where, where's the... Is there a secret area I haven't been to yet? Or is, am I just like far away from where I'm supposed to be? Either, either could work. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to go all the way over here. That's why. Okay, never mind. I'm just dumb. It's fine. It's okay if I'm dumb so long as I, you know, learn from it. All right, let's go find this chest. It's like way over here, I think. No, it's like way over here. Uh, you saw a theory that the traveler is Akavili from the Eon of Trailblaze and Star Rail, and it made me think, um, what if Tavata is a simulated universe? Eh. I don't think so because that would make it really difficult to explain how the Traveler just kind of ended up there. Like, how do you just accidentally enter the simulated universe? And then why would you try so hard to save it? You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it feels too unrealistic for the motivations of the Traveler. Oh, is there something over here that I missed? Oh. Wow. Really? All right, then. Definitely write this off as incidental gains. That was incidental, all right. Cool. 
That was mine. My name for now's latest theory was convincing. I saw it, but I have a really hard time following his theories. I always feel like he tries to do too much in one video, and then they should be like three separate videos. But then like he tries to push them all together, and then like by the time he makes one point, he moves off to this completely unrelated point. And like I don't see how they're connected, and then I don't remember anything. But he has a lot of good ideas, so I get really frustrated. Because I'm just like, if you, you know... Spread them out more. I feel like he'd really take off. Like, his, I feel like his channel would really take off. I, I feel like, I feel like there's a balance between... Um, making long videos that have a lot of content in them, and making a long video that has a lot of ideas. Um, one thing I really try to do, which helps me stay focused, which is important because everyone know, here knows how long-winded I am, uh, is I try not to have any more than three ideas per video. And those three ideas have to play off each other. Like, I can't have more than three ideas. There has to be only three. Um, and if I find that something's too confusing... When I send it to somebody and I say, hey, read this and let me know if you think this makes sense. Because that's usually all I ask for when I ask for feedback. Um, if they come back and say like, well, I got lost here. I usually just cut that whole section. It could be 3,000 words and I'll cut the entire 3,000 words. Um, it's more important to me that the whole thing makes sense than to be comprehensive in that case. It's much easier for me to take those 3,000 words that I cut and put them in a whole new theory, a whole new idea. And say like, hey, in this video, I talked about a similar topic and that made me think of XYZ, which is what we're going to talk about in this video today. And I feel like that's what my name for now should do. I know that's a very, that's a critique that no one asked for, especially him. He did not ask for that. Um, but that's my opinion because he has a lot of really good ideas. Um, but I really struggle to follow them when he puts them together. And I feel like he'd really benefit from cutting down the size of his videos. And then he could make more of them. Which the algorithm would like. Anyway. <clears throat> Fencer Daria, did, I, I don't think you, I don't think I've gotten to your super chat yet, Fencer Daria. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so far behind. I might just shut down supers at this point because I'm, I'm so far behind, and also I'm tired and I want to go to sleep. So, no more supers. Let me finish. <laughs> okay. Uh, Suryanu, thank you for your super. If you teleport in the Book of Revelations after teleporting, what? If you look back, you'll see the upside down fountain in the chasm underground. Yeah, yeah. I knew that. That was one of the first things. In fact, um, Sometimes the that spot actually that is. Uh, the exact same one. It doesn't have the pedestal, but it even has the exact same vegetation. Which I always thought was really interesting. I always thought that was very interesting. I said no more supers! <laughs> Truth face, thanks for the super. What would you want the next Dane's Lift quest to be about? Thanks for fun and smart content. Well, thank you. Um, I said this already, but, uh, I think that I want Dane's Lift to introduce us to the Hexen Circle. For those of you who aren't sure, um, what the last super was talking about, this is, um, this is what they meant. Um, you can see this is the exact thing in the chasm, the exact location, the upside down fountain is there, time isn't moving, so it's just a still image. Well, not really a still image. 3D, but um, but the pedestal that the uh, lector was using to summon stuff is uh, gone. Other than that, this is the exact same spot. Which is kind of wild. Kind of wild. Especially once you learn kind of like the secrets about this place. All right. Uh, there's time trials and stuff in here. I don't navigate this space without wonder, and I don't know how anyone else does it. I am very spoiled. 
Is this an actual floor? Is there is there like an actual floor here? Is that a thing? No, it vanished. Okay, I don't know, but there's a time trial. We're gonna do that. Hardcore parkour. Can we get a brief explanation of what Numa and Osea is, if possible? I would too would love if the game would tell us that. Um, I don't think I can give you much beyond a theory right now. Uh, what do I think about Alhatham and Kaveh being different parts of Deshret? That is exactly what I think. I think the whole roommates thing for me is like having Deshret's skull be the house. And then inside that skull is Deshret's logical side and Deshret's emotional side. And they are at odds with each other. And they need to be in harmony with each other for Deshret to like come to peace with himself. That is exactly how I see that whole thing. Um... Apple Bears, thank you for the super. There's no message here, but thank you all the same. And Fencer Dario, your super didn't get lost right there. Thank you much. Uh, if Natlin is a nation of dragons, what would make Nuvolet think he would be considered unwelcome there? Um, difference of opinion, I think, actually. I think it's a difference of opinion. See, the, the bishops in Natlin um, underwent... Uh, oh. Oh my. I am in the abyssal vaginas. Going around and around. You cannot tell me you guys are looking at these and not thinking the exact same thing. I'm also looking at these going, these are ermine soul cracks. Which also kind of freaks me out. Um... There's more time trials up here. I should actually explore this space. Uh, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. Oh, right, Natlin, bishops, that kind of stuff, right? I remember. We're good. Good. Oh, it's up there. Um, okay, I guess we'll go over to the thing first. And then we'll, we'll just run around. Um, okay, so I actually think there is a difference of opinion. Like, Nuvolet is from the old order. Well, he's not. He's, he's reincarnated. But the thing is, is he still thinks in the same way as the old order of the dragons, right? Too slow. And sure, he's become closer to humans over time and whatnot. But, like, I feel like his presence is, like, a symbol of what used to be. And I think Natlin is a nation that might actually be quite progressive. In terms of Tevat, I think that um, Natlin is trying to, you know, um, figure out a way for humans and, and dragons to kind of coexist. And I don't think they'll appreciate old school ways of thought. And I think that's kind of what Nouvellet does. I, mean, I, I think that's kind of, you know, I think that's kind of what they're going for. I could be wrong. Oh, I need a archer. There's all sorts of chests I haven't gotten here. Pluralistic nation. Yeah, something like that. Didn't keep you waiting, did I? Uh aw. Why are they Hydra? Oh well, I guess we're in the nation of Hydra. That makes sense. I guess I'm just used to these always being Pyro, but they're not always Pyro, are they? They were Dendro in um oh my god. In Sumeru. I think about it. <gasps> a Seely! Hi, little dragon baby. Bye, little dragon baby. He went back in his mom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't take that seriously. Brace yourself. Think you can get away? Yum 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 yum. Or Venti. He used to be cracked in the very beginning of the game, you know? He was like actually broken. People were just like, man, they need to nerf Venti. He's too strong. That was a real thing. And then the cataclysm happened. 
Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Let's get it on. Hey. Time for takeoff. Here we go. Bum ba dum ba dum bum bum. Bum ba dum ba dum bum bum. Okay. Come on. Yeah, please. Do do. Warp me. But yeah, still, poor Venti. I kind of wish he had a little bit more use than what he has now. Swan Fury. I don't need no warp pad. I can fly. Okay, now I need a warp pad. Whoa. Oh, wait. Whoops. I canceled it. No. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Let me back up. There we go. Oh no, we gotta catch one midair. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Mm, I might have to do this again because I accidentally missed one. Yep. I'm not gonna try and get that. It won't. It won't complete anyway. So we'll, we'll just. Oh, I think we're missing one. I am missing a Sealy. I see. I see. We gotta find a Sealy, guys! Too slow. Let us find the Sealy. Where does this take you? Over here. Okay. Back to the library. Following me. Top 1% drop the build. I don't think you're talking about me. I don't think I have any that are in top 1%. Uh, actually, that's not true. My, I think my Ayato is like... One of them. Or was he? Or was it top seven? It might be top seven. That sounds about, that sounds more right. Um, most of my builds are pretty average. I think... I don't know where the Sealy is. Maybe I'll find it if I just keep doing the time trial. What exactly is Numa and Osea in the lore? I don't know. They never say. I mean, we I can tell you what we think it might be, but there's no lore in the game that tells you what it is. So, like, I can't really answer that question. I can just give you a hypothesis. I have a top 5% Nublet. I do? No, I don't. Do I? Oh, there's the Sealy. Hi, buddy. I was looking for you. You even want Bye. This? Oh. There he goes. Um. Where am I? I am inside the Book of Revelations. If you haven't done this quest, are you really a regular viewer of the channel? I ask that facetiously. It's not like there's a requirement. Um, this is a place that you go after you collect some of the um, pages or a book. But you have to complete the Narts and Kreutz questline in order to, um... ...get these pages. You don't have to do the whole questline. You just have to do, like... Well, actually, no, you do. Uh, to access the book, though, I think you just need to trigger Canatilla's quest, and then you can get in here. And then after that, if you want to get, like, everything and all that kind of stuff, you gotta, you gotta get pages. Look, the narwhal was here. Oh, that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna show you guys something cool with the narwhal. Let's go do that. While I'm thinking of it, because if I don't do it now, I won't remember. Okay, I'm gonna do the narwhal real quick. Um, yeah, I know, I know, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I'm not actually gonna fight it. I just, I'm gonna like just. 
sit around here until something happens. I wanted to show you guys something with the narwhal. Alright. Not gonna fight it, just to clarify. We're, we're waiting for a very specific attack. I want to show you guys something fun. Remember how I said I think this guy is a star beast? And do you guys remember how I said at one point that I wondered if this narwhal was actually a child's constellation? Like, manifested? And that was one of the connections that he had with, um, with Skirk and Certology or whatever. Or, or with the, with the, like, what? She said, like, its power remained on you or whatever. Remember that? Like, back in 4.0? Remember he, she said that? Um, and then I hypothesized that, like, well, maybe. Maybe. The narwhal actually is his constellation. Like, legit. He's making a black hole with his blowhole. He's gonna do the thing, I think. Is he gonna do the thing? Wait! Ah! No! This is the wrong attack. Shoot. Mmm. I don't know. I don't want to. I'm, I'm just gonna sit here. I'm just gonna sit here. I don't care. I'm trying to get him to do a thing. I don't want to fight the root. The root is annoying and also not relevant to what I want to show. I don't know how to trigger this attack. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to go to the root anyway because this gauge filled up. Well, that's aggravating. I don't think my shower is built. Uh, should I just restart the fight? <laughs> should I just restart the fight? I didn't bring any Fontaine characters with me either, so I can't do like the Numacia stuff. Oh, yeah, here we go. Bishop! Bishop! Dude. Yeah, hi. Let me back to the whale. I don't want to fight this guy. He's not relevant. He can go away. I don't have any pneumosia. You just have to suffer. Bishop. Bishop. Dude. Alright, dude. Stop. Stop. Let me see the narwhal. There he goes. He goes away now. Bye. Alright. Now I have to just sit here and wait for the narwhal to wake up. Which is not what I want to do. We're going to just sit here and wait for the narwhal to wake up. Because the goal is not to kill him right now. I'm waiting for his attack. Is that child? Um... No. I don't think so. I think it's quite curious that... Um... There's a human inside the narwhal? Like, just in general? I think that's interesting. Well, not a human, but a humanoid thing inside the narwhal. I think that's really weird. Um, but I also think it's it's weirder that it looks like a black serpent knight. Alright, where are you gonna come out? Oh, right there. Will you please do the star attack? Please. I can't show the thing unless you do it, Mr. Fishy. If I call him Mr. Fishy, will he get angry? No? Oh, 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 there they go, there they go! Okay, here we go! This is it, this is the thing. So all these stars go up into the sky, they make a constellation, and there's Child's freaking constellation! 
and the star beast goes in it, and then the stars fall down. And that's why I think star beasts might actually also be people's constellations. In some way. That, 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 yes. That's what I wanted to show. It's really hard to see because it happens during attack where you actually have to, like, dodge if you're not playing as Zhongli. Um, which I am playing as so you, you can kind of do it, but... So you can only see it during that one attack. And only if you look up. But no one's going to look up during that attack because why would you? You're trying to dodge or, like, do damage, right? So why would you look up? But, like, yeah, if you look up, you get, um... You get that, uh, that, that, the child's constellation. Like, straight up. Where the heck is the boy? Did I pass him? There he is. Straight up, that's child's constellation in the sky. And that's why I think he might actually be the narwhal. Well, his constellation might really be the narwhal, like, taken shape, manifested, rolling around. I think, and this is a hypothesis, so, um, Sertologi is, um, the name of the fire of the fire giant Surtur. Surtur is one of the, um, entities that will bring about Ragnarok, which is also known as the Twilight of the Gods, which is quite interesting when you remember that Dainsleth's title is the Twilight Sword, and he also has a black hole behind him. I don't want to fight these guys. I just want the chest. Leave me alone. Go away. Um, but he brings about the end of the world, like the, the actual apocalypse. And Rhine Daughter, who he's associated with, uh, but like categorically, I mean, water shield. Yay, now I'm canon. Um, Rhine Daughter, who he's associated with, caused a cataclysmic event that basically destroyed a world. Well, it, it destroyed Conria, right? Like, that's kind of in the same vein. So I find that quite interesting, and I wonder if Certology is actually, um, you know, finding a way to weaponize things in order to do something in or with Tevat. And that also brings me to one other thing. Come on, stop. To one other thing. Now this is just my opinion. I have to preface. I have to preface this by saying this. I can't put them side by side, unfortunately, so you guys kind of have to keep some things in the back of your head. So here's the all-devouring narwhal, right? Um, when I look at him from this angle, not this angle, because he looks quite round at these angles, but if you look at him from the side, and then you pay attention to like some of the little details on him, apart from the crystallized bits on his back, he looks... A lot like uh, this guy to me from the side. And I don't quite know why, but I've been thinking about this a lot. <laughs> like, I know this is supposed to be like a wolf and the other one's supposed to be a narwhal, but it just, it just like, there's something weird about how they're both structured to me. That makes me wonder if Ryan Daughter was also trying to create something similar to what Sertology did and make it more real and just didn't manage it. I don't know. I don't know. They, they, they remind me of the same thing. It's mostly the face. Hard to put a side-by-side -side comparison here. It's mostly the face with the jaw and the teeth and then the eyes on the sides. They're not really eyes, but like the eye markings on the sides. I know this is a fish. I know they don't look super similar. But like when I first saw the um the render for this from this angle. The first thing I thought of was when the Golden Wolf Lord comes out of the portal in Surumi. Because it, it has that same feel. But anyway, um, they're obviously quite different animals, which is where a lot of the um, 
differences comes from. But I, I'm still, I'm still like it's full of this weird armor, and I don't, I don't know, I don't know. It, it has, it has the same vibes to me, and I'm not quite sure what to do with that. But it makes me wonder if um, that's also one of the reasons why Ryan Daughter was brought up in the same breath as Certology. It's because like, you know, uh, they might have somewhat similar goals, or might have some crossover in their research. I'm curious about that. I don't know why I went on that little journey there. I also just realized I still haven't claimed my battle pass. So that's something I should do to get rid of the little thing that's probably been bugging somebody! Do I think Sertology is King Ermin? No. No, 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 no. No, I don't. Not at all. Um, I do think that there's an interesting, um, actually, here's, here's one more interesting thing that I'll leave you guys with before I go. Um, one more thing. So, I don't think I can keep those items. I think they, you can only see them on the wiki. Yeah, you can only see them on the wiki. Um, in the Narts and Scroids quest, you can get, like, these three pieces of a circular thing, and they talk about the four root cycles. Which is like uh, Hyperborea, Natlantine, and uh, Karun Ira. And they're described as an era of frost, an era of flame, and an era of the humans. And it occurred to me, and I don't know if this is intentional, but the, the fact that they mentioned Certology made me wonder this. Um, they mentioned that those are cycles, but the way that time is structured in Tivat, I'm not convinced of cycles because time doesn't appear to loop on itself. It appears to be linear. So I'm, I would rather call them eras, um, wherein certain patterns repeat themselves, but time itself doesn't reset. I feel like that's a really important distinction. Um, so if you have these three different eras of ice followed by fire, followed by an era of humanity basically uh it made me remember that in norse mythology like the norse cosmology um that's kind of what happened right like there were frost giants first and then there were fire giants and then humans came well humans were created and i started to wonder if that would bleed over into other things because surter is a fire giant and he's supposed to bring about the end of the world and the end of the world you could look at as like an end of an era, right? So like say say when the second throne of heaven came and destroyed um the authority of the primordial one, which is what happened. Um that was actually like a war. Like it wasn't just one person that showed up. It was a whole mess of invaders from beyond the firmament, right? Like that was a thing. So if they showed up and they were like, all right, we're going to try and destroy the world or, like, take everything from you. Like, that war would have been, like, a cataclysmic event. It would have been, like, a Ragnarok. And Ragnarok itself is supposed to be a cataclysm that repeats itself. It's supposed to be cyclical, right? Like a cycle of death and resurrection kind of thing. That's part of the story. So I've been wondering if there have been not just four root cycles, but four Ragnaroks, and if the Conrian Cataclysm was the latest one. Anyway. Uh, do I think that child getting the KO by New Valette and come back apparently stronger is a reference to Ajax being stabbed by Poseidon and getting stronger? I mean, maybe. I don't know if he was stronger. I mean, Nuvolet kind of took a, you know, a sucker punch at him. I don't necessarily know if he came back stronger. I think that's a little difficult to place. Because, like, Nuvolet also took him out when he was, like, mid-transformation. Where he was, like, actually vulnerable. <clears throat> Whereas when he was fighting the Narwhal, he was in full transformation. Where he was, you know, stronger than he would be normally. If we use all the Gnosis, will we call it another Ragnarok? I don't know. That's a good question. It depends on what you think the Gnosis are and what they're used for. Sucker Punch mid-transformation is a cardinal sin. Not when you're the judge. 
Uh, what's my opinion on the Abyss sibling being the third descender? Um, I don't like it. And the reason is, is because I feel like it actually ruins her narrative. Well, their narrative. In my case, because I have Ether, it would be Lumi. Um, I think it ruins the narrative of the Abyss twin, if that's the case. I think there's a reason that one twin is a descender and the other one isn't. And I don't think that um oh hey look we can free an otter hi little buddy you're free oh thanks for that that was nice of you um i don't think that it would be good from a narrative standpoint for both twins to be descenders like i feel like there's importance in the fact that one is and one isn't and i feel like it has to do with the fact that one of them made a journey one way and one of them made a journey another way right because like if you think about it this way a descender can only be someone whose will rivals the entire world but that doesn't mean that only people who come from beyond the firmament can possess such a will and it also doesn't mean that it's their will necessarily that is as strong as it needs to be in my opinion every time that we've seen the traveler at their strongest it's been at a time when they've been uh the catalyst or the focal point of the wills of hundreds of other individuals. And I think that's the important part here. I don't think it's necessarily that the traveler needs to have a strong will by themselves. I think the traveler needs to be able to unite all of the wills into the, in the world into one collective agreement, right? Like I think they're supposed to be a symbol of unity. So being able to go through the world and make a name for yourself and be like a trusted companion and fix people's problems and stuff and have people put their faith in you um, means that you're trusted to the point where, you know, you can essentially represent their will. How does that sound? I, I don't not quite know how else to articulate it apart from, yeah, maybe not, not necessarily a collective consciousness, but like think of it, think of it like an orchestra, right? Like an orchestra with no sheet music. You kind of need a really good conductor for the orchestra to put their faith in in order for the orchestra to sound good. To me, the dis like a descender, a, a real one, is that orchestra conductor. And the people of the world are the people playing the instruments. So it's not so much that the, that the conductor needs to be the best musician in the orchestra, right? It's that the conductor has to be able to make everyone work together to make that music really shine. How's that? How's that? Does that make more sense? I mean, that's just how I think of it anyway. I, I don't I don't think of it as in like, oh, Ether's got like the super strong will and therefore he's better than his sister. Like, I don't think that's really what it is. I think the journey through to that is supposed to teach you how the world is supposed to be in harmony to get you to know them, to get you to care about them, to get them to care about you. And I think somewhere along the line, the Abyss Twin went a bit awry and something went wrong with their journey. I think something went wrong with their ability to unify people. And when those things went wrong, the cataclysm happened. And I think think the abyss twin is so far gone and so set in their ways that they're not able to become that symbol of unity i don't think they can i think they care about conria too much i think their opinions and their uh thoughts are at odds with uh that of the rest of the world and for that reason i don't think they'll ever really be able to um be that person you know what i mean I think that that's why it has to be the, the traveler. Yep, Zhongli is the conductor in the Genshin concert art. That is true. And in the animated short. They became a doomer because of something. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, basically. That's, that's more or less what it is. I mean, you think about it, right? Like, they, they met... Uh, they went on a journey with Danesliff and... 
they met Clotar and they met Kari Bear. They watched the horrors of what happens when things go wrong and they decided that, you know, things were wrong, that Dainsliff did something wrong, like Conria did something so, someone who was in Conria did something wrong and she blames them for it and she wants to like either undo it or uh, make it right or carry out what should have happened or you know like any any of those sorts of things that's more or less like where the abyss twin is at and that's why i think them being the third descender kind of misses the point however i think it's possible that there are five descenders not four um, not because there's like a fifth descender, but because I think there's a descender zero. I think that's a possibility. For the same logic as there may be 12 Harbingers instead of 11 if Piero is number zero. I, I think it's the same logic. Like the primordial one could have been the first descender, but because they're the first descender and in charge of everything, they are descender zero, not descender number one. So that is also a possibility. But um, by that logic, like numbering gets a little odd depending on who's counting and who's looking at things. That's something to keep in mind. But I don't think the twin is a third descender. I actually don't know where I'm going. I'm just kind of like going around in circles. I'm, I'm, I'm zonked right out though. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. My brain is poop. My brain is going away. Would that mean that Nibelung is December, December zero? I don't know. I think it depends. Um, I kind of get the feeling that Nibelung is more closely tied to the existence of the world rather than the one who's controlling it. So I'm, I'm very tempted to just say no. <laughs> but I don't have any way to prove it or to justify my claim or my opinion. I just, I, I feel like Descenders are a little different. Because Nibelung, for example, can't necessarily unite the world if he's on the side of only one species. If that makes sense. I, like, I wonder about that. But I also wonder if he can't really descend because, like, I really feel like Nibelung might be the one who created the world in the first place. Like, how could you descend to a world if it didn't exist yet? Because, like, the Primordial One didn't create the world. He, he, or they recreated it. They reimagined it. So it already existed prior to their tampering. Yeah. Anyway. Do I think the Abyss sibling will die? I think at the end the Abyss sibling will merge with um with the Traveler. In a chemical marriage. And by that I don't actually mean like you know, here comes the bride. I, I mean like I mean like when when you when you perform a chemical reaction. The fusion of two opposites. The fusion of the abyss and uh, the celestial light. That kind of thing. I think they'll fuse. Mostly because that's also the uh, the ending of Digital Devil Saga. And um, I like the ending of Digital Devil Saga. It's got, it's got a lot of the same vibes. Oh, there's a puzzle here that I don't want to do. I don't want to do this right now. I'm tired. I'm gonna leave myself here and take care of it later. Uh, your theory is that Tevat is one huge dream realm and Descenders Outsiders are powerful because they are more real. Um, I feel like it's a little... Well... Well, I did say put a pin in that idea, didn't I? Uh, I'm not sure if the idea is, is right, though, even though I put a pin in it for later. I said no more supers! 
Kang, thank you so much for the super anyway. <laughs> is Skirk wielding quantum? Potentially. I mean, yeah, it looks like it. It, it looks like that might be the case. Um, I want to clarify. I don't actually think that um, quantum will be a playable element. I, I'm... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted the berries. I, I don't... No, I, I don't want to do this right now. I, I don't care. I want these. Thank you, sir. Um, I don't think it'll be a playable element. I, I think if they add light and dark, they're going to do it the exact way they did it with the new Mosia. I think it's going to be like a sub-element to, you know, like a, a group of, of characters like we had with... um. <clears throat> like we had with uh, the Fontaine characters. They're not going to introduce another element. So, like... Oh, come on. What is my Xiao even on? Oh. Okay. I mean, that's not... That's fine. I, I, I remember what I did. I remember. I remember. We know the Danes will be playable. Yeah, I mean, okay. So if, if they do make it playable, they do add more elements, it won't be in this version of that, all right? Like, I, I really think that if they do that, it's going to be like in Genshin Part 2. Like, they never said when those characters will be playable, you know? For all we know, it could be like... Four years from now, after Celestia is dead and we start going to other planets and realize that the Astral Express is here. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I just don't see how game mechanically, like, they would be able to implement those. To be able to incorporate them into an already somewhat complex in, uh, reaction-based combat system feels overly ambitious. And not in a good way. I said no more supers. I said no more supers because, like, when people send me super chats, I get backlogged on questions because I'm super long winded and I take forever to answer them. And then, and then they just kind of sit there for a long time, and then I can't go to bed. They added dendro. Yeah, but they added dendro, and they teased it all the way back in 1.0, right? Baiju had a Dendro vision all the way back then. We knew Dendro was coming. It was being teased because it was going to get introduced in Sumeru. That was always going to be the case, right? They always said that. At what point in the story, besides maybe Conria, would they be able to add a light and dark element? They're not going to because seven elements is already too many. Dendro was always on the loading screen. It was always like an option. We always had an icon for it. We always had Dendro reactions in the overworld already, right? Like we we had the Dendro slimes. So so like Dendro was always foreshadowed. It was always there. It was always planned. They just wanted to make sure that, you know, combat had been refined and fleshed out before they added it because adding se having seven elements is complicated. From a design perspective. Like if you added light and dark, what would you even do with them? What would they do? Right? And in a reaction-based combat system, what would they then do? Like are you going to mix Abyss or Quanta with Geo to what? Create a dark crystal? <laughs> I, I, really? Really? Ah! Okay, I'm I'm gonna log off. I'm 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 a log. <laughs> Kronaros, thank you for the super. Oi Kono, thank you for the generous super. You guys have been very very generous with me today. Jesus. But it's also like almost eleven o'clock, and I have work tomorrow, so that I've got to do. Could Numa and Osea be the Genshin equivalent to Imaginary and Quanta? I think it's going to be as close as we get, more or less. Sooner die again than lay a hand on me. I think, I think, I think it'll, uh, it's basically how I think they'll ever implement it. Like, think about it this way. If we go to Natlin, what are they going to add in Natlin, right? They added an entire element 
in Sumeru. So they had to do something in Fontaine. So they added Numa and Osea. But the thing is, if they force you to have Fontaine characters, they have to, um, in order to do certain things, like they can't make it too overpowered, right? Because they, they can't structure an abyss in a way where like you can't actually win in combat without using this new mechanic that's only locked to like four characters because the region just came out. Like they, they, they can't do that. From a design perspective, they just can't do that. So, and that's why I said, like, I don't think they'll add more elements at this point. Because, like, to add more elements at this point would mean you'd have an entire region where you don't get any more of any other element. You're just going to get that element, the, that new one, right? What and when is the next video? Oh, that's a good question. That's the final question I'm going to take today. Um, cause that's, that's a good one. Okay, so... Um, I finished the 4.2 recap. There was a lot to go through, so it took me forever um, to get everything. And I, I still left some stuff out. Like, it, I, just, I just had to. Um, so... <sighs> ciao. Shush. Um, so that, that I've finished. It's recorded... Um, and it is with my editor. I owe them a couple of clips that are missing, um, but they will be taking care of that so I can go work on other stuff. Um, this morning I finished a review for Zenless Zone Zero. Uh, so I'm probably going to release that tomorrow or Tuesday because it, it's not going to take that long to record and edit. I just wanted to get my thoughts out on it because I feel like I have a slightly different opinion on the game than what I've mostly seen so far. Um, and I wanted to share it because it's different um and after that uh i have two theories i'm working on one of them is on the genesis pearl and the other one i don't know if i'll even get to this patch so i'm not gonna mention it because things may change um but then after that i gotta do a recap full story of the Narts and Kreutz kids because that story seems complete and I have a lot to say on it. There's a lot of really interesting things in there. Um, and so I want to do that. And so that's basically going to take us through the end of 4.2. And then after that, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on for 4.3. Like 4.3 seems really light. Um, I might be able to just like kind of go through the backlog of theories that I had so far. Or maybe we can talk about something like Remus and Lemuria. Or maybe I'll even, like, open up a poll for suggestions. And see what kind of topics you guys want to cover for 4.3. Because 4.3 looks pretty open right now. Which is actually kind of a, a nice thing. There's, there's, It's been so dense the last couple of patches. So yeah. So there's two recaps coming up. The review for Zenless Zone Zero and one more theory. But the theory itself is going to be one of the shorter ones. Like 15, 20 minute ones. It's not going to be one of my 30 to 40 minute ones. Uh, just for the record. I'm, I'm trying to keep them simpler. It doesn't always work. Um, but know that both the Narts and Kreutz recap and the patch recap for 4.2 are both very long. The patch recap is 46 minutes. Narts and Kreutz, I'm gonna try and keep under 40 minutes, but I make no promises at this point. Do I think it's weird that no one talks about the flood in Fontaine? There were no repercussions? No, I don't. A hundred years have passed. They, there's only so much they can do in a gotcha game like this, that kind of stuff. But yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here though, guys. Thank you all for showing up. Thanks for all your questions. I'm sorry I can't get to all of them. There are a lot of you. <laughs> and only one of me. Um I know I need to stream more, but I'm pretty strapped for time these days and I'm struggling to just do the stuff that I have I have been able to, to do so. when, when, when you can anyway take care of yourselves thanks for coming bye wait where's my button I guess to press the, there's a button <laughs>